Brian Peanut Brown, representing Detroit. Welcome to Vlad TV. I am your host, Cavario H, aka the Mind Plug. <laughs> What's the deal? What's the deal? What up, though? The infamous. What's happening with you? All right, all right. So, um, first, want to give a little a little background for people who may not be uh, fully apprised of your 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 background and your history. So as you you were born May 13th, 1969, um, you grew up in a, a rough Detroit neighborhood where both your parents struggled with alcohol and drug addiction and also had trouble with the law. Uh, you and your younger sister, Nikki, Nikki Michelle, were well taken care of and generally loved by your uh, grandparents, Essie, May, and Willie. Uh, I understand that uh, your father and his brothers, Terry and Dwayne, were active and uh, were known as the Dial Brothers. So let's start there. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about them. Um, well, my um, Uncle Terry, he was pretty much uh, into basketball. So he played basketball, went to college. He's doing pretty good. He could have made it to the NBA as well. And uh, he ended up uh, falling in love with, I guess, my Aunt Rise and ended up coming home. And from then, it was the streets. You know what I'm saying? Him and my Uncle Dwayne. And my father pretty much ran together for a minute, but even though Terry was, uh, they considered him like the younger brother, so they kind of like pretty much made him sit down. And then my uncle and my father pretty much done, was doing all the damage, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? To the streets, my uncle uh, ended up going to jail for life, uh, in prison for- Which one? A, for a homicide. Which one? Uh, Terry or Dwayne? No, Dwayne. Dwayne. Yeah, he did. He ended up doing 45 years. He just came home last July. He lived with me now. Uh, we always had a connection the whole time he was really in jail. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially when I got off into the streets. It was a lot of the reason why I'm probably still, you know, I guess I can say free and active because it was moments where I was losing myself because I just felt like I was being tested at every step of the way. You know what I mean? And he used to just have them talks with me about, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be where he at. You know what I'm saying? I'm, he not telling me not to deal with my situations, but he just tells me to be smart about it. You know what I'm saying? The exactly. thing is to get away with it, not to just actually do it. You know what I mean? So he taught me how to properly prepare and plan to execute my life versus, you know what I'm saying? Just dealing with my emotions, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, and from that, like I just been indebted to him. I don't think I could ever repay him. You know what I mean? Um, even more so than my father, you know what I'm saying? My father, he gave like hard lessons. He wasn't the type that would sit down and talk to you. You know what I'm saying? If he did talk to you, he'd be like, at the 10 minutes up, if if I was if I was dealing a drug, he'd give him out, he'd charge me, oh, every 10 minutes. You know, you know what I'm saying? He was, <laughs> he was real different, man, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> you said he, he was, wait a minute, hold on. We got to slow down for the people in the, uh, in the short bus. So you said he would charge you a O Every, every 10 minutes. Every tell 10 him, minutes, tell man. Him, tell him what you're talking about. Talking, tell him what you're talking about. I can be sitting there talking to that man. He'd be like, yeah, you know, you um, he can be saying some stuff like, uh, you know, you, the, the, the bottom line, man, you got you can't never really be keeping your money and your drugs in the same place. And he'd go off into whatever he, and tell us about a story of he had and, you know, telling me why I shouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Because the police come, they get everything. And then 10 minutes more. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, oh. you know, that didn't last for long because I didn't feel, you know what I mean? Like it was like right. sincere, you know what I mean? Right. So right. that ain't right. last for long. Then my other Uncle Terry, you know, um, he was all right for a minute. He was, he was, he, he, he gave me the vision of family structure because he ended up getting married, had two beautiful kids. Actually had more beautiful kids, but the two was living with him. One of them ended up, you know, going to Michigan State. Could have made it to the league. He didn't though, but... He's still league material to me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but he ended up taking a turn for the worst. He got the worst part of it being addicted to drugs. And he's still addicted to this day. You know what I mean? So you Your know, cousin? My my uncle Terry. Oh, Terry. Yeah. Yeah. My Dwayne's my father's brother. Right. Yeah. So he ended up being addicted to drugs, he addicted to this day. And um <laughs> to a crazy situation that kind of like really broke us apart. You know what I'm saying? I just got a, I just got to connect, and I was really I was really only dealing in cocaine. Like where they get this heroin shit from? It just came just for me getting released this time. But I was a cocaine boy. But anyway, 
the Kineki gave me some heroin. I didn't know what it was. I never dealt with it. So I just put it up in my grandmother's closet, which is his mother. He done stole the shit because I'm known for dealing cocaine, thought it was cocaine, and went and cooked mm. the shit up. Mm. And and it was it was the whole key of it. Went and cooked it up and uh trying to sell it and didn't even know it was uh heroin. Bro. <laughs> Bro. Lord. <laughs> my God. Bro. I wish I wish that we could uh, uh let's try. Let's try to go into the implications of a mistake like that. <laughs> for the, for people who don't have an understanding of our world like bro. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So, what happened? Man, my my grandmother um I didn't not nah, nah, he didn't done that. I didn't found out. My people didn't told me what it was and told me the value of it, which was five times the value of one kilo at that time. You know yes, what sir. I mean? So when 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 they told me that, you know, I kind of like it went crazy. You know what I'm saying? Looking for him. Then my grandmother sat me down, like, look, you ain't out there killing all these other motherfuckers and just ran that spill on it. That's that's my own, that's my son, that's my youngest boy. And you know what I mean? That's like your brother. And you know what I mean? Just ran that spill on me. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're gonna right. kill him, go kill. It's about four other motherfuckers you need to kill before you kill him. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so, so that kind of like paralyzed me, you know what I'm saying, a little bit, because she was yes. right. You know what right. I mean? It's a couple of shit, a lot of little shit I didn't let go. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really let it go. But remember, my uncle taught me the job right. to get away with it. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Anybody so I can, can do and it. And then I'm moving. I'm doing so much. I'm damn right counting money all day, every day. I really ain't got time. That shit is like kind of like yes. beneath it's me now. It's a distraction. It's off the path. Yeah. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I'm staying focused, doing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just ain't have a chance to get with it. And before you know it, it, it was too minor for me to even deal with. Right, but but now when he cooked up the thing, when he cooked up the joint, the the dope, the heroin, mm -hmm. he cooks this up, um, and he goes to try and did he realize that it wasn't? I don't even. I, man, I swear to God, man, man I I really, I for really the life don't... of me, I can't understand how he could he could be handling <laughs> thing and thinking that it's. Girl, I don't understand Me that. Either, the, the texture is not the same. The smell is not the same. Like nothing's mm -hmm. the same. And yeah, once I really, you get the finished really... product, <laughs> like what did he do with that? What you Man, tried to sell at the I'm people? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm unconscious. I didn't see him for probably about seven months after that, bro. Oh my god! Like but he... he had people chasing the dragon, and they didn't even know it. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Man, okay. Wow. <laughs> Didn't expect that. That's crazy as fuck. Mm -hmm. we're gonna, we're gonna but that's when I learned that you really that. can smoke heroin too. Cause yes, they, sir. They was doing it. Yes, sir. Absolutely. It's called Chasing the Dragon. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. With you know, before the word crack was introduced, um, I had customers who who would want me to cook both. You know, at the same time, so they could put them both in the pipe at the same time. Dang. This was back in eighty. Mm. 82, you know, mm -hmm. like that, 81, 82. But I mean, that was a rare thing. And that was hardcore <laughs> addicts. Right. Hardcore addicts. This is predating crackheads, mm -hmm. you know? Like, wow, that's that's crazy, son. And that's, that's probably crazy. how his ass got hooked, too, because that's what he's on heroin now. Didn't probably, that's, that's probably, probably how that where, where it started from. Oh yes, because once they had, once they ride that wave, mm -hmm. there aren't there aren't very many waves that are compatible to that. I mean, you know, a, a a good heroin package is is a hard high to beat, man. Mm -hmm. Very very hard high to beat. Um, bliss is how it's explained. You know, my sister was a dope fiend, and half of my uh, eight or nine um, first cousins were heroin mm -hmm. addicts. You know what I mean? So I, I grew up with it in my home. And I, I know what it's like firsthand, you know what I mean? And that it's, it's a hell of a thing to get out from under, man, you know? Um, the, uh, so, I mean, so you, you, you obviously, you had, you had a, fir a front row, a front row seat. So when, when did you first start it? When did you first start to realize what was happening in your, in your immediate environment? We're not talking about your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Talking about inside your home. Oh wow. You had active individuals in your home. Um probably when I was like uh five, going on six, the very first time um I was introduced to it, 
was actually not through actual drugs. I like always seen and seen and seen it. But what made it resonate with me is when my father had called me out the bedroom one day. You know what I'm saying? And and I, like I didn't figure out till later on as to why he wanted me to do it, but he had wanted me to shoot this man in the head. Yeah, right. give, give me the gun. Tell me to shoot him in the head. I'm holding the gun. It's a revolver. I'm holding a gun. He like, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Nigga crying, please don't, please don't, please don't. Just crying, sweating, already bleeding. They've been pistol whooping him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. You know what I'm saying? And I'm shook. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm very little. I ain't even really been playing with guns. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when he did that, I was kind of like, you know, kind of like shook. So he just snatched the gun back and basically said, get your ass on back in the room with your mama. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I went back in there and... um. Before you know it, I don't know what happened or what they did or what they la lapsed at, but the dude ended up diving out the window. Mm. Dived out the window, ran to his car, got his uh, shotgun. That's all you heard was shots coming through the through the house. Oh, he came back. Yeah, he ain't go nowhere. Shit, this guy, guy was in the front. <laughs> oh, oh, so y'all were y'all were like uh, in a a house or something? Yeah, he duplex. Was able to jump like out. Kind of like, ah, a, like so he, a duplex. So he had no distance to go? No, nah, he all. had no distance to go. Right across the street, for real. It was like right on Tyreman and um, Beachwood. It was a, a store called Vicks back in the day. But he went. Yeah. his car was parked right over there. Dived out the window, ran to his car, got his motherfucking gun, and came back shooting and walked through that motherfucker. You know what I mean? Me my, my, me and my mother hid up under, and, and um, my little sister was an infant at the time, hid up under the um, kitchen table. And he walked through there. You know what I mean? Came through mm. there. He ended up, he ain't get, he, you know what I mean? But He ain't killed nobody. No, nah, he ain't killed nobody. But not too long after that, he ended up getting murdered. Right. Yeah. Actually, but, Detroit is a dangerous city. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. he ain't killed nobody. Nobody Nobody got hurt that day. Oh, blessings for that. Yeah. Wow, 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 boy. Um, And and we we just, in, we not even, you you not even 10 years old yet. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so, oh my God. <laughs> I thought my story was fucked up. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> um, um, so, all right. Now, so you, you, you're getting, you, you're starting to uh, get an understanding. I think this is where we were. So now you, you know, you're starting to get an understanding of the your environment. Not even you're not even outside yet, mm -hmm. and you're starting to get understanding that the environment you're in is is a rough one and a dangerous one. Right. You know, like how does that experience, if you can, if you can recall, not necessarily how you felt then, not that you shouldn't be able to, but it, overall, like how did that experience the being asked to do it, um, the, the, him coming back and walking through the house and having to hide with your mother in the bed. How did you feel that experience impacted you? Honestly, it didn't have, uh, I, I, I didn't see any impact on it at the time, you know, cause right after that, that was like the beginning and like the end of like my reign with my parents. Cause my grandparents took me after that. You know, I guess that was a straw that broke the camel's back for my grandparents, you know what I'm saying? And uh, my Whose mother. parents were they? Huh? Whose parents were they? My mother's. Oh, okay. Oh, no, if it was my, if it was my father's parents, I'd have still been in it. She different. You okay. call her my Barker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she a little different. But um, I ended up moving with my, um, with we, me and my sister ended up moving with uh, my grandparents. And, um, I don't know if it had an effect. I, damn, that's the first time I ever been able to ask the question to make me reflect about it. I'm going to say that it didn't really ha affect me because I end up being a schoolboy sort of sense. You know what I mean? Like, like I was starting to get good grades, playing basketball, um, and I didn't immediately go that route. You know, with the mm. violence. You know what I'm saying and all that. I didn't immediately go that route. Would you attribute the fact that you didn't go that route immediately to the changing of your environment, like going to your grandparents' house? Oh yeah, definitely. That that definitely had a lot to do. Um, what were the what was their home like? Um, it was a small apartment. We was living in a small apartment, two bedroom apartment. Um, mm -hmm. 
It was my grandmother, my grandfather, in one room, me and my sister in the other room. Um, the and then that's another thing that was so beautiful about it, like the apartment building was owned by my uncle, Uncle Jesse, and our Bert. And the whole building was nothing but family. It's mm. like they bought a building just to move our family that migrated from the south there. So everybody was family. You know what I mean? Like Uncle Charlie, Uncle Joe, you know what I'm saying? Around on the other side of the building, you know what I'm saying? Um, That's awesome. And so it was just all family. So it went from people being in the house all day using drugs, you know what I'm saying? My father selling drugs, using drugs, arguing, fighting, you know what I'm saying? To just everything love now. Mm. So it sounds like your mom got away from her real developmental environment. And got she caught ain't, up. No, she ain't. No, just me and the sister. She, my mama stayed with the shits. Right. Well, I'm talking about initially. For yeah. You, for, it sounds like your mother's parents had a whole other thing, a whole other program yeah. going on. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. She so, she got away. Yeah, there the you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, she got away from that. And, and what part building. of the South did they come from, you know? Uh, Meridian, Mississippi, my mother and father. And then my my grandmother on my father's side. No, my mother on my my mother's side, Meridian, Mississippi. Then my mm. father's side, like Fort Valley, Georgia. Okay. Um. So, so now you know you're in a, a better environment. Sounds like a more nurturing, more loving, kind of structured environment, and mm. it's having the desired effect. All right. So you you focus on school. You're doing well in school. You mm. are involved in sports and stuff like that. You're behaving like a normal kid. Mm -hmm. Um. What happens? What what begins to happen? What's the, if you could point out a particular thing that occurred or a, an event or something that made that, that changed that trajectory, what would, what would it have been? That made that change when I converted to the streets? Yeah, when you went the route, the other route. Um, it was my, I just graduated from high school, my first year in college. Um, wow, that, you made it that far. Huh? Yeah. You made it that far. Yeah, even though in high school, like I used to steal weed from my uncle and sell nickel bags, but I don't think that was really nothing compared to mm. when I really crossed over. That right. was that was just something just to, that was on some, you know, um, it started off from the guys on the football team wanted me to bring weed to school the following day so they'll give me their money. And I would buy it from my uncle, you know what I'm saying, and uh, take it back to him to the point to where I just start dipping in his shit, taking it, right? You know what I'm saying, and selling it on my own, you know what I mean. But um, right. But that wasn't that wasn't uh that wasn't it. I, I want to say like my 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 senior year because I didn't want to be a hustler. I just wanted extra money just to got it, you know. But so my senior year, my first year of college, my grandmother and I got disappointed in me because I didn't I had like four or five schools where I had free scholarships to play basketball. One being Jackson State in their area, they really want me to go there. You know what I'm saying? And um I didn't want to go there. You know what I'm saying? You talking y'all y'all first of all, y'all got me shook because y'all y'all my uncle gave me a car. Street lights come on. I had to drive home when the street lights come on. You know what I mean? So I'm like, <laughs> I'm not able to you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> really, I'm still like a kind of like a shelter kid. You know what I mean? Right. So it went from that to two years later, I'm graduating. You know what I'm saying? They talking about, okay, now you need to go all the way to Meridian, Mississippi. I'm like, I'm not going way down there. So I went to a local college on Grand River mm -hmm. and Greenfield, which is called Jordan College. Mm -hmm. And um, they was giving me $10 a day to go to school. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I guess at one at some point, I don't know if it got tight or they just said, fuck him. Or, I don't know what it was, but they took the $10 <laughs> down to $5. Mm. But I'm conditioned for the $10. Right. You're going to need five for gas. You're going to need five for your little meal. You know what I'm saying? So I already been conditioned. So when they did that, I solicited a dude from the, from the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? If he can give me some drugs. And he gave me a ball. You know what I mean? Coke. Huh? He gave you some Coke. Yeah, he gave me some Coke. He gave me right. eight ball of coke. Now, mm -hmm. what I didn't know was people was cutting four or five, three, three to five hundred dollars off of eight ball. I didn't know that. What what year is this? This is eighty seven going on eighty eight. Mm. 
They still cutting. They still cutting that off of eight ball. So I wow. get the eight ball ticket one fifty. I cut mm -hmm. one sixty. <laughs> I want ten dollars. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Oh shit! So, so I, I, I'm imagining you got some big joints in that case. You see what I'm saying? Compared to everybody else, so yeah. this is where it all started. So I sell it with like probably within ten minutes. I said the, the white motherfucker, which was my um my uncle, Burr Callahan, and then I had this other girl, this other lady named Robin. So my father ended up having a baby by her. Mm. But, they, yeah, but anyway. Anyway, um, I sold it so fast, they're like, get, get some more. So I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm, you know, so I'm cool. So I end up getting some more anyway. Before I, before you know it, before I go to school, I probably even sold like seven, eight, eight balls. You know what I'm saying? I don't know nothing so, about the weight now. I don't right. know nothing about the eight ball to the quarter, to the half, to the ounce, to the big. I'm clueless right. about any of that type of shit. When he give right. me something so, and say what it is, that's what it is. So, so you so you copping and quote unquote eight ball, but you don't know that the eight ball is three and a half grams. No, I don't know none of that. <laughs> I don't know none of that shit, bro. <laughs> oh, you know what's so crazy about that is you got you got all of these deeply involved criminal types in your immediate family, right? And he, they skip right past the basics of you know the the the, the weight and all that whatever and go straight to your pop this motherfucker the head for me real quick <laughs> I mean, what what i'm sorry yeah because you would it's think they great. like they call it so if i guess shelter me from this shit so nobody never gave me a one-on-one -on -one for real wow nobody never nobody never talked to me about drugs you know what i'm saying no my uncle wow. my father my mother nobody you know what i'm saying so when that happened, so it went from there to the dude started giving me ounces, like it is to ounce. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna be 600. You know what I'm saying? So again, I'm not really trying to make no whole lot of money. Right. So I might cut 630, 640. You know what I mean? Mm. So mm. here we go again. Now I'm selling six, seven ounces a day. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, but, I'm cool. I'm cool. Now I don't gotta do no more. But but before but you know you, it, I got lines of people that use crack at the crib. At the crib? Yeah, at I'm at my great grandmother's and... house now. I'm at my great grandmother's house. My my mother's mother's mother. Going wow. to school, going to college from there. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a little older now. She's older. She needs somebody to help her. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I got my little freedom. I'm I'm fucking now. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to right. be over there and just be a little free or whatever. So right, but I'm, you still don't know that uh, ounce. Don't know the weight. Ounce. Don't know none okay. of that shit. Right. Don't okay. know none of that shit. Let me tell you. I find this so shit. You... Out. This shit crazy. You so lines. <laughs> now I'm, I'm doing that. I'm killing them. You know what I mean? I'm selling anywhere from six to 12 ounces a day. Killing them, bro. Killing them. So my uncle's mm. one of my uncle's best friends, which his name is Tone. He came over there and said, I heard you hustling, bro. What you doing? Now they, them, them, him and him and uh, uh, his best friend, Nick, they, they was known for, the, the cocaine and the weight, you know what I'm saying? And through the hood, they're the first ones with the vets, the Benzes and all that old shit back in the day in the hood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The Jeeps, whatever came out, they was known to, to, to be that, the cocaine boys. So okay. he came, I heard, I heard you hustle. I'm like, yeah, he's like, he like, what you what you doing? I'm doing about six, seven ounces a day. He like, oh, so you're doing, you, you doing, a, damn, you, you're doing about a quarter, half a key? I'm like, no, nigga, six, seven ounces a day. He like, that's a half. I'm like, I'm like nigga, six, seven ounces, nigga. That's what I'm doing today. You know what I mean? Trying, don't be trying to belittle me talking about half or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, motherfucker. Oh, so, so, so he like, oh, my God. right. So he like, let me see what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So um, I showed him. So he like, uh, you got a scale? You got a triple beam? Triple beam? <laughs> no, I ain't got no more tri triple beam. What's that? That's a scale. You ain't got no scale? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You're I'm killing sorry. me, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. Oh, shit, bro. <laughs> he said, I, said, I ain't Yo, got no motherfucking scale. So he like, he like, he like, all right, I'll be back. So he could go get the scale, came back. He said, now, you know what? I'm supposed to weigh 28. 
So I'm like, nah. So he, he um, balanced the scale out, put the first ounce on there. It might have been like 19. You know what I'm saying? The second Wait, ounce. This is one of the, these are ounces that you've been previously Sell. purchasing from someone else. Yeah, cutting them up and selling them, thinking that they okay. were whole ounces. Okay, go ahead. So, so he's wearing your ounces. He's wearing my ounces. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They're supposed to be ounces. Right. You know what I mean? So the second one was like 21. The third one might have been like 23. You know what I'm saying? Then 20. None of them 28. Jeez. He like, none of them 28. So like, this is what I'm finna do for you. I'm finna, I'm, finna, I'm finna go get something for you. So he went and got me a key. Mm. So he brought it back. It's some powder for him. I'm like, bro, I don't sell this, bro. I sell this, the cookies. Oh, wait. You, oh, Cass was selling you supposed zips of heart. Of heart. So she, you don't even know if he was really selling cocaine or not. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because like back then, Benzo and all that shit was famous. You know? Woo, was it? <laughs> yeah, so uh, he went and got me a key. So I'm mm. like, man, I don't, he, he's like, you don't know how to cook? I'm like, I don't know how to cook, this is how he bring them. You know what I'm saying? Now, I've been rolling for probably about a month now. Wow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what wow. I'm saying? So um, he um, gave me the key. He taught me his way of cooking, but I had another. But I had another friend. I had another friend named Tino, the one who actually introduced me to Charlie. He was a cook master. He was able to take a hundred grams and make it come back to like one seventy five, one eighty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dry cook. Which you know, was straight uh, baking straight, soda. Straight baking soda and powder. He would, would put a hundred grams of um. Put a hundred gram, hundred grams of uh, yay in there. Put like about thirty three grams of soda, and just enough water to make it look milkshakey. Mm -hmm. Put it on the stove, let it cook, melt down, and then just spin it, spin it, spin it to it get to a, a damn near hard, and just let it sit and get straight hard. That should be like 170, 175. Mm -hmm. So the the the, coke, the material itself was good enough to hold yeah the soda yeah and and not have somebody get it and be like. Yo, that shit was straight bacon soda. Exactly. Yeah. So that shit was good. So that took my game to a whole nother stratosphere. Cause now my rock's so big, the guys that's normally buying ounces from even the person I was getting ounces from, they coming to buy six and seven hundred dollars worth of rocks for me. So now it goes from me doing the ounce shit to me selling no less, I swear to God, no less than $25,000 a day in dime rocks. No less. Now, now, now this is beginning a month after you first start touching hard. That's it. Cold period. And how long from the point that your uncle introduces proper weight, proper material, does your situation chunk to 25 racks a day shit probably a week man jesus christ how probably, old are you probably huh how old are you at that point 18 going on 19 mm -hmm. probably a week it wasn't no time because i i'm telling you i i, I had to have the motherfucking the 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 top crack marketing motherfuckers in the world you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like everybody mm -hmm. followed these two for drugs, like everybody followed them. Oh, they you know what I mean? super touters. Yeah, so, you know, um, with them being my floor generals, like it was just, the sky was the limit. You know what I'm saying? And then when a person actually come and get the rock and see how big it is, that done that done its own thing. And then me, like, I was on some mad scientist marketing shit. Like I would just bust out and do, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was getting so much money. I just do the two for one. Yep. You know what I mean? So they're like, how long yeah. is this going to be? I don't know. Today your lucky day. You just got to keep coming. I don't know when I'm going to do it. Depends on how I feel. You know what I mean? So that made motherfuckers just, regardless if they they if they come or not, they getting the biggest rock, period. Then you might fuck around and get a two for one. Where else they going to go? Right. I had everything from probably Warner Grand River to Wyoming and Warren. Wow. People buying rocks. Give, give people even the hustlers give people that uh aren't familiar with the 
geography of the D, um, mm-hmm. a, a, a kind of a space like uh, in terms of mileage type okay. of thing. In terms of mileage, it might have been two miles each way. Mm-hmm. Two miles this way and two miles this way. So now the the operation is set up how? Like uh, you you in you in a building, you in a you in the projects, you in a courtyard, how nope. you rocking. Like like it started off over my like I said, over my great grandmother's house. And what I used to do, because I was doing so much, it started, you know, Detroit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So uh, the side, uh, the side of the house, I had a side door, and then right on top of the side door, going up the stairs, all the way up to the top of the, the top floor, it's mm-hmm. a window right there in between the first floor and the second floor. So what I used to do, I used to put a cup, <laughs> a cup with a string and them little twenty five cent jug, jug juice jug cups, with you know one of the twenty five cent juices. <laughs> Try to shoot a string around there, they drop that motherfucker down, they put the money down, they put the money in there, put back up whatever it is, they put the rocks back down in that motherfucker. And, and that's how I was doing it. And it got so it got so crazy though, I had to get an actual rock house, which I got around the corner. You know what I'm saying? About two blocks <laughs> over. You know, um, and that's when it really, 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 really crazy. So uh, who it, it, like you you got a bottle. Like, I mean, there were days. And bottling might take 10 hours. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so if you got a bottle, uh, you know, some somebody's got to, gotta, you know, handle the cooking. Um, you were working with Rock initially. Somebody was, you know, already cooking it for you. So, oh, so you got your cooking guy. Yep. Um, who, who's your table? Like, you got to have a table operation. Where, would you, where were you at the table at? At, gram- at Great Grandma's house? Yeah, at Great Grandma's house. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, she she 80 years old. So she ain't moved, doing too much moving around. You right. know what I'm saying? So I pretty much had the whole house. She basically lived in her bedroom. You right. You know what I'm saying? So I basically had the whole house. Um, and she, she wasn't I, aware of all the activity going on outside the, the window? Yeah, she, she was aware. Yeah. She was aware. No beefing? Nah, not really. Long as I know drama coming, right. she wasn't really Grandma tripping. Was she was beefing more and more with the <laughs> some crazy shit. She was beefing more and more with the girls than she was my actual hustle thing. I remember one time, <laughs> one girl time, my grandmother moseyed upstairs, right, and caught a girl giving me some head. Oh boy! So listen, so I seen it over the, the when I, I seen the door closed back. I'm like, damn, I think my grandmother seen you. <laughs> she, she like you for real I'm like I'm telling you I think so so I don't, I don't know to be going downstairs and going downstairs Leah's like okay bye big man don't talk this way don't talk get, get out don't talk this way <laughs> <laughs> put that dick on your breath get the fuck out of here <laughs> she told me girl don't talk this way get out the house just don't talk this way and you don't gotta come Woo. back just don't talk this way <laughs> Ooh, my god Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, so like I said, it was pretty much cool though. She wasn't really. I was really. A, I was still a good kid though. I was. I would do everything I supposed to do. Make sure she good. You know what I'm saying? Go to the store for a store runs. Sit there and talk with her. You know what I mean? Like, right. What, like I was a bad. Like just turned all the way. I was still a good, wholesome, moral type kid. That's interesting. You know, a lot of people, a, a large part of our of our society would automatically say that if you're selling drugs then you are you have no morals but um they don't they don't know that within that space within that world we have a very hard set or we used to there used to be a very hard set of morals and ethics hard set Mm -hmm. not the kind of morals that when you didn't um stay in tune with them people frowned upon you and whispered about you the kind of mm-hmm. morals that you 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 either held this up or you get your head knocked off mm-hmm. so we were way more moral right you know within the within the you know the parameters of the life but yeah the, the people are going to definitely be like morals mm-hmm. he's selling crack out his great grandma house what kind <laughs> right. of morals he talking about <laughs> right but i'm taking care of the whole neighborhood how so I mean, just everything, man. It wasn't nothing that nobody couldn't come to me for. From crackheads that got pulled over with the jail, I'm going to get them out of jail. Like it was nothing that I won't do. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I can just, you know, um, somebody can call me and got nothing in the refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? I go get a house full of groceries. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about it wasn't nothing I didn't do, man. Like, nothing that I wouldn't and do that I didn't do. What would, in that that type of behavior, what would you attribute that to? Would you attribute that to the, uh, the, the familial raising or would you attribute that to, you know, uh, feeling like you were taking so you needed to give back. No, it never was that. It never was that. It was just always, I always seen that. Even though my father was a wreck, he always took care of the community. Mm -hmm. Like he always looked out for everybody. Everybody loved my dad, but he's a fucking goon. Mm -hmm. Like everybody, when I tell you love him, love him to the point to whereas that police could never catch him in the hood. His right. door was open to the whole hood. That's right. You know what I mean? Like they never could deal, you know, like all of that. They'd take the gun, whatever. He, he can be running. Yep. Get somebody the gun, they tucking it. That, and that's, that's just all I've seen. My uncle, you know what I'm saying? Taking care of the hood. You know what I'm saying? That was selling weed, taking care of the hood, taking care of the people, making sure everybody good. We didn't have no, no robbing, no, no, no breaking, no being in, in like a six block radius each way because we governed that. That's right. You know what I'm saying? We found out somebody broke into somebody, took somebody's shit. We going to get it back and we're going to make a statement. That's right. You know what I mean? So those are the type of things that I've done to whereas that I still have love in my hood today where I can go there and, li and literally live. It's been times when I've been so busy working, cutting, selling, woo, woo, woo. go upstairs. I fucking fall asleep. Just think I'm going to run up here, run up so I can leave my car on, run upstairs and end up falling asleep. Yep. Come back downstairs to the crackhead sitting in my car. I Running and sitting. I wasn't going to let anybody take your shit. I'm just going to sit here till you come down. I know it's your shit. That's right. Yeah. Guess what I do? That's right. Yeah, we That's ride. Right. We go to dinner. I took him to the titty club. We had a ball that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That people don't understand how essential it is for a cat that's going to you know, really be all right in those, under those circumstances where there's so much danger in every direction. You got people want to rob you. You got people want to tell on you. You got people want you out the way so they can step in your shoes and all that. And to f survive in that, in that, that environment is, it's about way more than being tough. You, you, it's, it's good to be tough, but it's much better to be smart. Mm -hmm. And when you move in a way that people who are in those environments, man, like whether they are combatants or not, whether they participate on one side of the bag or the other, they know what it is. If they're a, 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 a black person living in those types of environments, they know what it is and they know, you know, to some degree why it is. So it's really not about that as much as it is about, you know, how, how yeah. you go about it. Right. And mm -hmm. when you move the way that you move, um, even people who go to church every day and go to work every day, you know, they they know that if you're moving with sense and all that, whatever, you know, morals and ethics and stuff like that, that, you know, you're keeping things in order. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, and, and, and if something were to happen to you, they know that there wouldn't be another you coming along for a long time, if ever. Right. You know, so they protect you. Mm -hmm. And that that has a lot to do with lasting, you know? Yeah. Other because if you don't have that, then you got the opposite. You got everybody working and, and, and in every way possible that's, to get that's rid of the you. On, that's the only reason I'm still here right now today, bro. On how I manage my life from a moral perspective. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, and I had a family that didn't want to leave the fucking neighborhood. So it forced me to be more diplomatic than anything. Because if I hit and miss, my family done done. That's right. You know what That's I mean? Right. That's so right. So I had to it figure right it out. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm a little, then I'm a little guy. I, I, you know, I just started getting some height on me when I was like 23, 24. So I was probably always like five, six. You know what I'm saying? Five, five. You know what I'm saying? 120 pounds. So, and I, I'm, I'm a loner. So I ain't right. had no crews. Right. So I had to have a brain and I had to have a heart and I had to know how to use these two together. Facts. You know what I mean? Facts. Big, big facts. So you you move your operation at the point at which you're doing 25 or on average um, a day, and now you move to a crack house. Mm -hmm. All right. So what changes about how you do what you do, if anything? Um, what changes once I move over yeah. there? Yeah. Well, what changed? I ended up meeting a friend of mine that I was going to college with. And he had a connect. 
and Coke Connect. A Coke Connect. You know what I'm saying? So he his Coke was way, it was probably three thousand dollars cheaper than my dual Coke. Plus, we we was on the basketball team together. So I was way much closer to him dealing with him on an everyday basis than I was my uncle, Tone, which was like my, you know, my my father, my, my uncle's best friend. So we got way more closer because I'm dealing with him every day. So I started copping from him. But not only was I copping from him, I knew all of the hustlers too. So I was selling his work as well. So no matter what he get from 10 to 30 keys or whatever, I'll sell that shit in a day for him. You know what I'm saying? So it got to the point, it got to the point to whereas that when he get on, I tell him, just save me one. I'm going to run, I'm going to run through these for you, but just save me my one. So, um, where it turned at, one time I ran through his bag. Now when it's time to get my one, he ain't got my one. Mm. And so, your one was for your breakdown, for your spot. For my crack house, for my crack house. You know what I'm saying? But so, you, you must be doing that. That must be a day. A day, a day, right. literally, literally every right. day. So, so um, now my crack house is out for like hours. So now mm. I'm forced to call other people, figure it out, call some of the people I done sold to to get some back from them. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it was just, yeah. it was just a, a tedious yeah. thing. So his connect was asking who he had selling all the shit. So he told him me, and he told my uncle sell weed though. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get some weed, you can get some weed from my uncle. So his connect said that they wanted to buy 50 pounds of weed, right? I take them the 50 pounds of weed over there. They tries to cop me. Look, <laughs> I give you, here, take them 10 Duh. right here and give me 16. Now, mind you, the ticket 25, 26. He told me to take prior, it. Prior to this interaction, your ticket is 25, 26. Yeah. That's what they're going for in the streets. 25, 26 a brick. So I don't do it. I'm loyal. I tell my dude, hey, your man tried to give me these bricks at this number. You know what mm. I mean? I'm not tripping. That's his situation. So he still give me mine for 25. Right? So. But now you know that now there's I know. a, 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 a $11,000 difference. But a I'm $9, still. $9,000 difference. But I'm so in tune with just in that piece with myself. I'm still not counting this paper. I'm not, you know, none of that. You feel what I'm saying? But. Of course. But um, now he did it again. The motherfucker say he wanted 50 more pounds of weed. I go over there again. Same shit. Man, your man keep trying to come at me. You know, so I keep telling nigga, you loyal. You know what I'm saying? You're a motherfucking soldier with all that old hype shit he gave me. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah. That, that cat was a little older than you? Yeah, hell yeah. He was, about, he was probably about seven years older than me. You okay. know what I'm saying? Just an old nigga that was just going to school just to distract the police or whatever because he was a hot boy. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But um, so, uh, we go through the situation again. Now this is the last time. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm out. You know this time. You know what I'm saying? I'm not able to get them out. My spot out for a day and a half now. I'm I'm hot. You know what I mean? Guess who called again? One fifty more pounds of weed. Mm. Yeah, I take the weed over there. You know what I'm saying? He's like, man, take these motherfucking things, man. Give me fifteen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this 15. happened within this, this happened probably within thirty days. No. And, and, and now he didn't dropped it to fifteen. Yeah, he dropped to fifteen. You know what I'm saying? And it was 10 of them. So listen, so. So off the rip, you take the 10, you automatically saving yourself $100,000. You see what I'm saying? All right, now, nigga, this is loyalty I never, and But see, this is the thing. I was never a weight guy, so I never was counting my money from the weight. I was counting my money from the rocks. <laughs> is that crazy? <laughs> Retarded, right? Yeah, you was cute, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, man. So. So when I proceeded to take the 10 and I'm finna leave out the door, he was like, oh yeah, go down in the basement, get that 150 pounds of weed. I ain't want that shit. Cause I knew goddamn whether he was selling with me. So I got the 10 and he gave me 150 pounds of weed back. That he paid you for? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Gave that, gave weed back to my uncle. Here, there you go, uncle. What, what? Yeah, you can have that. You don't sell no weed. Took the 10, came back to him in two hours with the money for the 10. Know what I'm saying? Mm. Gave me 25. Came back to him and probably about eight hours with the money for the 25. It was over after that. 
Now, how long has it been between copping the, the ounce, little bottles the with, this, with the eight balls and this point? How long are we talking about? Three months. Three months. Now, three, four months. For people, for people who, 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 who are listening to this, who might be young and impressionable, we need to put this kind of experience into perspective. For one, we're talking about an entirely different time, mm -hmm. right? Um, the whole environment was different in terms of the narcotic situation. Mm -hmm. The quality of the material was much higher, one. The uh, availability of the material was much higher because there were a lot more means by which to get it into the country. Everybody was bringing things in from different ways. You had shit coming in from the Bahamas, from Puerto Rico, you know, coming in down in from Miami. Like there was a lot of material on the street and it was highly competitive, especially around this time you're talking about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so for a person to have the type of, uh, we'll call it good fortune under the circumstances um, uh, that you had is uncommon, you know? It's very uncommon. It was uncommon then. It, it, it's, it's, it's like a virtual impossibility now. Right. So although it might sound like a great experience, and you know something that you would want to have happen to yourself the likelihood of something like that happening in this day and age is extremely unlikely it was kind of unlikely then mm -hmm. under the, like it, within that space of time but we did get a lot of money really quickly um you know back in that time right. you know what i mean um but like in today's terms that's not that's not realistic right you know what i mean but uh, that was our little little disclaimer we're not promoting mm -hmm. you know the life and all that we're trying to share these experiences so people can be one entertained but also most importantly informed right so you were you were at the point now you didn't got the 25 you got the 10 oh. knocked them off in two hours got yeah. the 25 came back uh how long eight hours for the yeah. 25 yeah yeah so so he was shook then he was like so he asked so who are you again so i told him my name you know what i'm saying because he really ain't no he, he ain't no shit. He just knew I was a loyal motherfucker from how I carried it for my dude. Right. You know what I'm saying? So this motherfucker and he asked me my name, bro, to probably like when I got when I got to 50. You That's know what I mean? Crazy. So so that was crazy. So he asked me that. So I told him, you know what I'm saying? He was like, man. So they started calling me the golden child. So now. So he gave you a million and a half worth of material and then asked your name. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Just, just want yeah. to make sure they're paying attention. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. So, um, but I had already showed them the characteristics of my ch of my 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 character. You know, my 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 person, my loyalness with the dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, who wouldn't do what? Show sure enough. You know what I mean? And the only reason I done it then was because he kept shitting on me. The all I ask you to do is hold my shit, bro. I don't care how much money you make from the shit. I just want right. to be able to keep my people happy. It wasn't even That's about it. making the money for me as of, you know, like all of that. I just want to keep my people straight. Mm -hmm. So now when he, when he gets to the motherfucking 50, I'm saying, all right, now these motherfuckers give me 50 like this and don't even know me like these motherfuckers got it. So now my wheels started spinning like I got to create me a team in order to facilitate yeah. what they finna come with. So I, I grab three or four of my closest friends. So I say, bro, look, these motherfuckers giving me this shit. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm telling you, it's going to get greater and greater and greater. I need help. You know what I'm saying? So this is what I'm prepared to do. Now, when we sell this shit, we got an $11,000 profit margin. I'm just going to take a dollar, which is $1,000, off of each one, and we're going to rotate the bag. Yep. You know what I mean? Susu style. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it started off with the first 50. I might have got 53 times, you know, and then they went up. You know what I'm saying? So after the first 50, all the money go to Vlad. Boom, get the money. You know what I'm saying? You got 500,000 now. Now all the money go to my man. He got 500,000. Now all the money go to my man. He got 500,000. Now they up to 100. So I'm like, damn, mm -hmm. I ain't even get my chance yet. When I ain't tripping, because I need my cap I need my people to get money so they can pay for this shit so I don't have all this pressure on me. So instead of me taking my turn, I do the hundred. 
Now you got 1.5. I do the hundred. He got 1.5. I do the hundred. He got 1.5. You know what I'm saying? Now they up to 150. So every time they raise up a numbers, I, I in my mind, I gotta have my people to get more money because I gotta have them be able to pay for this shit. You know what I mean? Like I can't, you know what I mean? So That's man, right. I done done this shit a couple more times. Before you know it, they they are like 20. You know, you know what I'm saying? Um 2000. So when they get to try, I said, okay, now look, y'all motherfuckers got four or five million a piece. I ain't made no money but a dollar of toss off each, each one of them. I need y'all to do these motherfuckers for the next two or three times for me, no matter what they is, and I get all the profit. That's how I made 68 million in like in like 60 days. Like literally. What? Yeah. So okay, interview's <laughs> over. That's that. Forget about it. You're done. <laughs> It was <laughs> the fuck out of here, yeah, son. Yeah, man. Cause I'm making t look, I'm making ten off of tw off of two thousand. Goodness gracious! Whatever them people brought me, I was done in a day because I'd already beefed my people up to where they got the money to pay for it. So now, when the bag come in, what I do, I collect the money first. Of course, you know what I mean. Tuck the money, and drop the bag. Absolutely. Go home, count the money. That was my day, every day, bro. That's that, That's right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so this is an awful lot of activity to be going on. I know it's a lot of a lot of work. And, 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 and give or take, time. give that, or take some days it wasn't day after day. It was like Of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still, still, you know, well above average in mm -hmm. that space. Mm -hmm. Well above it. Well yeah. above it. You and I both know that. The majority of the cats that got in the street, uh, you know, it, from the mid 80s uh, up until about uh, the early 2000s, they were lucky if they saw $10,000 of their own money at one time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They didn't have the wherewithal, no matter how good the material was or how available it was, they just didn't have the capacity to manage themselves and manage their thing. So they, they, they never accumulated anything. Mm -hmm. You know, money came and go, maybe the, you know, came and went, maybe the uh, connect got paid, you know, maybe didn't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But what you were doing was well above average. What you were doing is in the top 2%, and I might be being gracious with that, right? Um, and being that that is the case, there is the inevitability of your name ringing like no other. You know, to and be then to of be, course to be, that, to, and you know something that's crazy though, Vlad. To be honest, it wasn't because I didn't go nowhere. I was a hood nigga, like my neighborhood. I was a neighborhood type of nigga, and yeah. even <laughs> when, hold on, yo man, did you just call me Vlad? Oh no, I'm, I'm a fart. <laughs> <laughs> my fault. But listen, <laughs> I was a neighborhood <laughs> type of nigga, so. I um I didn't I didn't venture out. I wasn't really going out like that or none of that. And then when I did start fucking with the cats from like Seven Mile, they hung out a lot. So they would always asked me to come out. So when I did go out with them, I was so humble and meek. Like you okay. thought I worked for them. That's the way it's done. You know what I'm saying? Like right. nobody never, no man. I was dealing with this girl. She was carrying me forever because she thought that. The motherfucker who had these Benzes and all this old shit that I worked for him. And this man and this man won me five to ten million dollars at a time. <laughs> Surprise, <bitch. laughs> So it sounds like you felt as though you were keeping a relatively uh low profile. Yeah. You probably felt like nobody knew what was going on with you. But at some point, yeah, you found out that, yeah, that they knew. motherfuckers knew what was going on with you. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a whole part of the 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 the, the life that y you obviously weren't being exposed to, and I know that from the fact that you weren't given those those basics about you know what this is, what it's worth, how much is this stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So if you weren't being given that, you certainly weren't being given the uh, the other side of it, right? So when did you first realize that you had more attention than you cared for? Oh man. Um, probably, 
probably when my girlfriend's mother asked to borrow some money. Um, we was out for a while, and I think we was going to be chilling until election time was over. So we might have not started back until like February or something. So when did you, when did, was that a regular? This, yeah, yeah, you know, like, you know, like any time from damn near like August to probably like January, February, they, they shut down. And during an election year? During the election year. Yeah. yeah. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of the cats that came behind us don't know that. They don't know anything about that. They don't know that at, uh, uh, during election year. Yeah. Those of us who were cognizant, mm -hmm. we would, we would, minimize if not shut down during that point during that election period mm -hmm. because you know for obvious reasons everybody's yeah. looking to get get trophies and right you know make a statement so they start you know peeling cats off the street left and right mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and so you know you 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 knew about that how did you know about that from the connect you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying they used to be like no still not the family like Nobody's really teaching me nothing at the crib like that. Right. You know what they I'm saying? Wilding. But, huh? They just out there wilding. Yeah, they just and, yeah, they just out there doing them. You know what I mean? And and honestly, like, they didn't even know my power until it was too late almost. They didn't know mm. how much I really had or what I accomplished until so, the until the heat came. So you weren't you weren't doing you weren't doing Benzes and BMs and Porsches and Rolexes and when I when I got the first Benz, I might have had thirty five million already. It, 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 that's easy to believe when you acquire that much bread so, that fast. So fast, you know what I mean. So you might have had thirty five million already, but how long had you been fucking around? How long had you been running? Yeah, I've been um, probably about seven months. Shit. Motherfucker don't do that. You know what I mean? Probably about seven months. <laughs> no. And the only reason oh, I got oh. the Benz was because the one dude, like, he was having problems. You know what I mean? And he saw, and, right. and he just wanted to get rid of the car. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like I was going to actively go out to a Benz dealership to get me, I'm going to get me a Benz. One. Right. That's how I got the Benz. That's how I got the Porsche. That's how I got the Volvo. You know what I mean? All the cars I had, that's how I got. I got from niggas who was having problems. I went like, I'm just like, I'm going to shop, I'm going to shop for me a car. Never. That's crazy. I, I never. <laughs> and, 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 and what was your apprehension about going to cop and going to a dealership and making a big purchase? What was your apprehension about it? Um, I just never really had one. Like I come up with my uncle. He, he was dealing with these with these Jew cats that had car dealerships. And and right. all while I was hustling, they taught me different shit too. You know what I'm saying? So like, for instance, like when I first started getting into cars, um, me acquiring all them cars. I probably had seven cars in my driveway when I was still selling rocks, but they was hoopties. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So a crackhead said, you open up a car dealership, all these motherfucking cars. Bing. Right. So I go with my uncle and I go get with the Jew guys. Now, mind you, and this, this is going to trip you out. So when I get with them, I'm telling them, how can I start knowing I'm in a car dealership? But they have been liking my energy that they was like, you can just, you can just use us. We, whatever you need, we just get it for you. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, mind you, every car I had, I bought with all $1 bills. I didn't spend nothing over five on the fucking car I had, bro, for like two, for about a year and a half. Everything I bought, I bought with $1 bills to make sure that I wasn't fucking my money off. So I'm only gonna spend the ones I know that's not gonna hurt me. You feel what I'm saying? And all the rest of the shit I put up. So everything I bought, man, for for probably the first year for sure, man, I only bought with $1 bills. God damn. Man, <laughs> listen, man, I, I, it's a good damn thing that we didn't connect back then, bro. Cause I swear, bro, <laughs> we would've done some serious fucking damage. With, when you were younger, I had uh, read something or maybe heard you say something before about, you know, um, a after like an after school program. It reminded me of, you know, an experience that I had. So I was I wanted to ask you about that. Like mm -hmm. you had a situation prior to you getting into the, the, the heavy end of it. 
where you were going after school and your uncle would have you sitting behind the, the bars pitching. Is that right? Sitting behind the what now? It, it, sitting behind some bars uh, in, a, in a, like a, a, a building that you- Yeah, selling you, weed. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it, so uh, how old were you at the point at which you were doing that? Probably 16. You're 16 years yeah, old. Yeah, because he, he had just gave me the car. And um, like I say, he, he was busy. You know what I'm saying? Actually, that's where I got the concept of the cup. Because now I'm behind yeah. the bars and I'm just surfing through the chute. Right. And it's safe. Right. You know so what this I'm saying? So this is why I asked you that. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the sophistication, as simple as it was, of somebody who didn't get no kind of training, mm -hmm. but you're, you're steadily adapting, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. most cats, they don't adapt. Whatever right. they start out with, if that's working for them, they'll do that until it destroys them. You right. know what I mean? No matter how much it serves them and grows the situation, they won't expand. They'll just keep doing that same thing until mm -hmm. they get played out. Right. They don't adapt. That's common. And your, what you shared with us so far, you adapt. Mm -hmm. That stands out to somebody who's been through it. Right. That's not common. So it's, it, it, it makes me ask, where, where did you get these things that you did the way you did them? Where did you, where were they introduced to you? They had to be introduced to you in some type of form or fashion prior to you starting to implement them. Mm -hmm. Just paying attention. You know, even though I wasn't involved, I just paid attention. You know, um, my father, he did teach me that though. You know what I'm saying? When I was going to visit him in jail, you know what I'm saying? And it was just about life. He was like, you got to pay attention. You know, he he always tell me like, that's the one thing you got to do is pay attention. Cause you know, even though a situation may not have nothing to do with you at the present time, it may present itself to you in life later on. That's right. So if you pay attention to it now and you, and you watch how it unfolds, when it appears in your life, you're already ahead, ahead of the game cause you know what to do to, to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? And then he also said that about character. You know what I'm saying? He said, you always want to control your destiny and dealing with people. So he was like, if you pay attention to a person's characteristics and their aura and their energy, you know what I'm saying? And you put that in your database, even though you, you're going to run into a different person, he may be a different color, a different shape, a different size, a different age. But if you pay attention to them, char them characteristics and their aura, and, and and it makes you say, damn, it remind me of. So now you pull out that data bank of who they remind you of. And now you know how to build and form a relationship with this person because this person's characteristics are omit, omitting the same energy and information as what you got in your data bank. So now you control the narrative of the relationship. Brother, <laughs> if that man never gave you anything else, <laughs> that right there, you should be thankful for all your days because that right there is the essential ingredient. Right. Pay attention or pay everything else. Yeah. That's it. So tell me about um, the point that you, you start to get some attention you don't want. You, you, you start to, you know, like somebody's got to try to come and get some of this money before, before anything. Somebody oh, gonna try oh, to come get this oh. money. The neighborhood, that happened in the neighborhood, man. I was still doing rocks at the time. And I'm like I said, I'm green as hell, bro. Like, so a nigga challenging me, I'm I'm up at Crunks hooping. Mm -hmm. They like, you ain't got no motherfucking money. Who don't? I'm just start selling rocks though. <laughs> nigga, who don't got no money? Nigga, you ain't got no money. You a lot, nigga. I got fifty, nigga, I got about fifty thousand. Like, you ain't got no motherfucking 50,000. Where is that? Nigga, it's a home in my safe in the basement. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's safe in the basement? Man, you got a safe in the basement. Oh, you do? What's the combination? Listen, bro. <laughs> so he asked me that shit, man. I'm still hooping. This nigga done disappeared. I ain't thinking nothing of it. Get home, dough kicked in, safe gone, money gone. I still don't know, though. Mm. Bro, I do not. I swear, man, I didn't figure mm. that shit out till mm. about six months mm. later. Now that's a that's a top college education you just paid for. You just paid for a year at Harvard. Man, I did not figure that shit out till six months later. But when I figured out, 
I employed him. <laughs> My motherfucking man, goddamn. Yep. I employed him. Say what? Say why? Okay, I employed him. I built him up to about three, four hundred. You know what I'm saying? Built him up to about mm -hmm. three or four hundred thousand. And I mm -hmm. had this system where I collect the money first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And all that old stuff. So he was always mm -hmm. pressed about getting because he was always trying to plot to rob me. Even when I employed him, he was still plotting to rob me. So he 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 really got me sharp as fuck. So after I employed him, fed him, programming him, paying attention to how he do his shit, okay, I'm, I'm about to be on. So now I know that his money is going to be here every time I'm about to be on. He's going to take the money to this one safe spot he always go to. You know what I'm saying? So after about the sixth time, after I know, you know, he was he was getting, you know what I'm saying, at least 10 to 15, I knew the money was going to be there. Yeah. When I got my money back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and, uh, and, and totally, damn, that's, that, that's so unfortunate, but I'm going to front you. Five. <laughs> now, check this. I got I, 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 bro, I, I have to, I have to tip my hat to your cloth. <laughs> you know? Like, I almost want to cut this off. This ain't, they, they not even suited for this. You understand know I mean? me? Like, for real. Like, what you just said is so obscure, bro. Uh -huh. It, it, it. To most of the cats listening to this, mm -hmm. I would say they would think that that was something out of a movie. Right. But they don't understand that art imitates life. Mm -hmm. None of those things are created. They're adapted yeah. from actual people. Other than that, you didn't have any situations where cats were, you know, trying to rob you and slit you, line you up and so forth and whatever. Yeah, I got kidnapped. Um, oh. Yeah, I got kidnapped. They had, um, what 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 year was that? This was um, this had to be in '88, top of '88. Like I'm still, mm. it might have been '87, '88, because I'm Yo, still this, doing rocks. I'm still doing rocks now. Yeah, it's crazy in this this that era. Yeah, I'm still doing rocks now. Just switched over to weight, and um, that that 190 that I got for my dude. I was on the corner of my grandmother's street, renting my car off. A dope fiend came up to me, asked me to have any change. So I said, um, I checked my pockets. I really didn't have no change. So um, I been to finish. He take a step away, turn back around, put a gun to my head. Bang, damn, they knocked me out. Mm. So when that happened, some more guys came. They popped the trunk, opened my car, threw me in my trunk. So um, when they did that, they took me to a house. So now when I get to the house, they had this big ass floodlight. So when I when I opened they opened the trunk, I couldn't see shit. Hit me with a bat, boom, boom, boom. Close your eyes, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Put some over my head. Took me down to the basement of the house. Took all my clothes off. You know what I'm saying? So when they took all my clothes off, they um, where the money at, bitch? You know what I'm saying? First, no, first they said I killed somebody. I'm like, man, I ain't killed nobody, man. I, ain't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, well, well, then they was like, well, where the money at, damn bitch? I'm like, what money? So they was like, um, nigga, we know you got it. Where the money at? So I'm like, man, I don't want you talking about I ain't got no money, man. So he was like, well, give us 70000 nigga. Oh, it comes to dope and we let you go. So the guy I got the bins from, I called him. I said, man, I don't know what's going on, but these guys got me. And they saying, first they said I killed somebody. Now they say just give them 70000 and they'll let me go. Can you give them the money? So he, they was talking to him. He structured something for them to get the money. They put me back in the trunk of the car. Now, you know, in them bins, is, they, back then, they had the button you push in. Now, if you yep. take that plastic piece off, you can pull a button in the trunk pop. Right. So now, and then they put me back in there, I pulled that piece off. I hadn't opened the trunk yet because I didn't know what was going on. So then when we, got to, when we got to a destination, I felt that they had left. I popped open the trunk, got out. My dumb ass, again, some dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? I run to some people that's outside late at night, guy and a girl, run up to him, asking, can I use the phone to call the police? No, they can't let me use no phone. You know what I'm saying? Woo -woo. So 
I just got somebody try to kidnap me. And, and it didn't dawn on me till that they was probably watching me until he wouldn't call the police. So I ended up jumping the fence, ran a couple couple houses down, you know what I'm saying? And just hid up under the bushes for a minute. You know what I'm saying? And then as I hit up the bushes, I could see the car. And so when they came back to the car, they popped the trunk and had the gun pointing in the trunk, like the bitch gone, right? So I'm sitting there watching that shit, mm. crying like, what the fuck? What the, what the fuck I do? Like, what the fuck? Like, who is these motherfuckers? So another little time go by, I jump a couple more fences, knock on the door. They let me use the phone. So I call my people, you know what I'm saying? They riding up and down, cause I ain't got no phone. They riding up and down the street. I'm seeing them go by, but I'm so scared to come out the motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. It took a minute, you know what I mean? It right. took a minute, right. bro. So I had to have the people call again and tell them, you know what I'm saying, where to stop at. So they did that, I ran, jumped in the truck and we just couldn't believe it. Like, I don't know what the fuck going on. You know what I mean? So um, that's another time. Did you uh, ever find out who was behind that? Bro, I swear for Jesus, this was, this, that fucked up my life for a minute because I didn't. And when I tell you, oh man, this shit crazy. I might have heard so many innocent people mm. Mm. during that time because, because mm. mm, I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I remember a time when I'm leaving my grandmother's house and I'm just chilling. Like, I'm hot. I'm trying to figure this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Um, a nigga rode up on it. Well, actually, two people rode up on the side of me laughing. Mm. What, mm. You know something mm. I don't, nigga? That was just fucked up for a minute, man. Bro. I'm talking about for a minute, bro. I couldn't get right. I get it. I wasn't even a hustler no more. I get it. I get it. I <laughs> lost my mother in 94. Yeah. And um, yes. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. it, it'll fuck you up. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? Like these, these, these types of experiences, that's what I'm saying. Like those, those are the parts of the game that uh, you can't display on a on a DVD right. or or you know a rap record. And that and that's really, you know, other than getting to the bag, that's really all you're dealing with. Yeah, avoiding that <laughs> constantly. Yeah. So this this is a, that's a traumatic experience, no doubt. You know. And um, it's it's obvious that you are uh, a good being. That's that's obvious. Mm -hmm. Everything that you shared to a discerning person is clear. So you know the circumstances that you were born into. Um, they impacted you, but they it did not it did not change you. Right. And uh, the fact that you were able to hold on to that thing that is. Uh, essentially you and not just a combination of the genetic material that you came from that thing that's uniquely you and you're holding on to that that's that's why you're sitting here having this conversation and we're not talking about you talking right. with you <laughs> you know um so what happens next who are you what is what's 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 your next move um Honestly, they drove me deeper into darkness because after that, they kicked the dough in at my grandmother's house. She was in the bathtub, snatched her out the tub, butt naked. Who kicked in the door? Some niggas. <laughs> yeah, some niggas, man. This uh, this is at great grandma's house? No, my grandmother's oh, house. Oh, that's your man Willie's. mother, my Barker. Okay. Oh, oh, word? Yeah, they went in on her. So all the time she thought it was my uncle who gave me the first brick, but it wasn't him. Really? Yeah, she thought it was him, but um, it wasn't him. Just like I said, I was, I was in a dark space, man, for about, it seemed like a long, long time, but it wasn't number like four months, but 
man, I couldn't get yes. right, bro. I get it. I get it. I get that. Like that right there, that's that's something between, you know, A likes, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they gonna miss all of this. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, what's uh, what they say? My wife says, uh, milk for babies, meat for men. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so how do you move forward from this? Now what what year is this? Uh this is in like I say, this was 88. How old are you? 88, 19. 19 years old. Yeah. You still a teenager. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with a lot of money. You're dealing with a lot of moving parts. You know, you're dealing with a major narcotic conspiracy that could put you away for the rest of your days. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's the, there's the daily dealing of with that reality, you know? Um which blankets us in paranoia, you know what I'm saying? No matter how we moving, you know, people think it's a struggle to move like like you ain't doing what you're doing when you're doing what you're doing. But, it, you know what I mean? It really ain't. Not if you're cognizant of really what you're dealing with. You be like, look, man, I just want to get my money and just be cool and <laughs> not have to, you right. know, add obstacles in a situation where there are already enough built into it you know um but you got to move forward so how do you move forward um the the guy who i got the bands from i went to stay with him for about two months and he helped me out a lot you know what i'm saying um, he so you weren't active during this period i was active on some other shit. I wasn't active for as hustling though. Hustling, right, got you. I, you know, I, it, it got, cause you know, um, I did have one of them talks with my dad about when, when somebody takes something from you, you gotta go get it back and make an example so they don't take it from you again. You have to. Yeah, so. That's, that's another thing people don't really get when they choosing that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So go ahead. So um, he was just talking to me, man, and uh, it kind of like he got me back on track, you know? Yeah, and, that's uh, love. Huh? That's love. Yeah, yeah, he kind of got me back on track, man. And when he got me back on track, like I said, it was instant activation again. You know, um, it was what, just was, hard. Was this, huh? I was about to ask, um, was there something, is there something about that experience and getting back on track that you you can recall in particular uh, and, and would you be comfortable sharing that with, you know, the watchers, the listeners? No, cause it, it, like, 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 it was just a fight because now I'm not the same happy, moral kid, you know, I wasn't the same kid no more. Mm -hmm. Now I'm attacking it where everybody is a suspect to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I'm moving. I'm I'm analyzing, and, and this what made me like every night now, even to this day, like I analyze the words that were spoken to me, the eyes that I cross. You know, like when I see a person's eyes, how they, That's what right. I feel from it. I'm analyzing the conversations that I said, that somebody said. I'm just analyzing everything at nighttime so I can properly prepare to go off into my day tomorrow if I feel like I need to deal with something. Because I'm right. paranoid now. That's right. You know what That's I mean? Right. So, like, it just it just changed me forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, change, it changes the value of the goal. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't, first, like I said, first I wouldn't the you same choose it, and the then the next thing you know, is it, it owns you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everything you got going on, all of the people you got depending on you, all that shit is attached to you continuously making that choice. Mm -hmm. That shit is different <laughs> when you look at it and you realize this is my life. Like, you know, this shit got me. Mm -hmm. This got me. It's different. That shit hey, is different. You know the blessing about it though? Like I was so fucking green that all the assailants knew I was so green that they didn't like See do away the, with me. They felt yeah, like I was an easy that's right. picking. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's they right. felt like I was an easy picking. Even to like, you know, like 
when it when it started getting when I started really getting out there and you know people building animosity for women or whatever, they still thought I was easy, you mm -hmm. know. But like I was just like I said, I was taught to get away with it, even yes. to the point to whereas that you can confront me in a club, and I would literally swallow my pride. Like it would kill me, but I would swallow my pride. No problem, bro. I ain't. That's right. I'm super cool. That's and right. I might send a nigga in there from a whole nother side of town and get into it with the same person. Yep. And I'm That's I want, so old school. But I want a major disturbance with this argument, with this fight. Right. You know what I'm saying? So That's right. after that civil with and the dude come out and whatever, whatever, like the last thing that people was gonna talk about is what? That's right. He had a beef with social success. Yeah, they was getting it in. Man, man, they was, it was ugly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then they could do their detective thing like they would do with their yeah. bright selves. They ain't, talking, they ain't talking about me because... Not at all. They I was know. humble when I... You know what I mean? Other than that, you are falling for the sucker trap. A lot of these cats that get into... Get off into all the guerrilla act, a lot of them do not understand that which they do for real for real. and when they get what they get they be just as surprised as anybody right, <laughs> right. and if they survive they are telling mm -hmm. that's crazy right because they don't mind doing that because that's who they actually are right you know it ain't got nothing to do with how they convince everybody else or whatever mm -hmm. their nature is fine with them telling because that's who they actually are right right and and you be jammed up, you be jammed all the way up. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's called the sucker trap. So you got to be discerning. Yeah, you, know? you have to you have to really know how to assess your your dangers, and you know, uh, and try not to respond disproportionately to perceived defenses. You did like if, if you don't have that control yourself, then you, you ain't got shit because you damn sure ain't control nothing else, no matter what you think. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. So you getting you getting back to it now. You you young. You, you nineteen years old. You sitting on a lot of bread because you ain't paid none of them extortionists. Did they find <laughs> anything? <laughs> right? Did they find anything at Grandma's house? Uh, my Barker's house. It wasn't much. Okay, so you know you chalk that up to the game. You know yeah. if you live to fight another day, it's your day, mm -hmm. right? You call the shots for that day. You know what I mean? And so now you're back at your bag. Mm -hmm. You're getting busy. And what's the plan, though? Because now you done had all of the, the, the blinders removed. You know what I'm saying? The rose-colored mm -hmm. glasses are gone. You know what it is now. Well, so um, what now what's it worth to at, you? At that time, I was trying to cross over into the car shit. Um, like I said, I was fucking with the Jew cats. Mm -hmm. And... They had taught me something where I was, I wasn't making just as much money, but I was making great money with that. Back then, insurance jobs was the thing. So mm. what they taught me, um, yeah, I went to the auction with them. They made me buy 10 Cadillacs and 10 Lincolns. I might have paid anywhere from 1000 to 3500 per car. Everybody know back then Cadillacs, you go rent them from Avis. Yep. Lincoln's, you go rent them from Hertz a budget. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I get the cars, go rent the motherfuckers, put insurance on them, take the parts off the rental cars, put them on the ones I bought from the auction. <laughs> 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 Reported oh the motherfuckers God. stolen, run them back through the auction and get anywhere from 20 to 40 for them. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. Same thing with Suburbans. You know what I'm saying? Um, so they taught me that game. I milked that game for about a good year. Killed them. You know what I'm saying? And before you know it, um You still but you still you still dancing with the with the bag though? Yeah, of course. Uh, okay. I ne never stop. Okay. Like never stop. Diversifying. Yeah, Diversifying. never stop. I get it. And then they taught me um the insurance job just on uh the finance tip. So back then you can have 10 different IDs with with social security cards and all that old shit. So I would go mm -hmm. get like 10, 15 people, get that shit straight, credit straight, go put $1,500 down on Suburbans. So I would have like 15 to 20 Suburbans. Um, after three months go by, insurance, I'm going to take the tires, the seats, 
You know what I'm saying? The radio out. They gave me a check for about 15 to 25. Put six on the principal. Paid the note stuff for six more months. You know what I mean? Um, sh- showing a job again. You know what I'm saying? Put six, you know, all the way into it's paid off. Before you know it, I got 15 paid for Suburbans where I didn't probably made every three to six months 120000 off of. You know what I'm saying? Just on some insurance shit. Mm, mm, mm. So somebody gave you the uh, the white paper cake. <laughs> you did. They uh, they was they was like fuck popping your collar, motherfucker, <laughs> button it all the way up. Yeah, this is what the white shirts do. Yeah, that's yeah, what they that's, do. That's, 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 that's yeah, what that's they what do, they do. That's, that is that is the system. It's designed yeah. that way, so it can be worked that way mm-hmm. by those who know how to work it. Exactly. They gave you real game. They gave you real game, and that and and that that's great fortune too, because that leads you into a mindset of you know, a hustle hustles always in all ways. I don't have to be selling narcotics in order for me to be getting to it like I like to get to it. And you so know you how start. I bartered them to to help me, to work with me, to help me with the car shit? Because they say they help me, but the only plan that they had, the only way they can help me, if I stop bringing in ones. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that is a stipulation that yeah. I, I know. but i can dig it though you know what i mean like it's like it's like uh um with larry and bj and them like what are we gonna do with these ones yeah. i don't know yeah. let's give it to the poor people and go riding shooting down grass it mm-hmm. you know what i mean dumping them you know what i mean <laughs> passing that crazy ass mcdonald's or hot ass mcdonald's over right there. right like, i could imagine but that that's that was the attitude you yeah. know but singles was baby mama money uh, you know what i mean i'd give <laughs> i'd give her two feet three feet of singles <laughs> it'd be like you know do whatever take them shopping and do whatever you want to do you know right. what I mean? this is you talking about 80 four five six seven you know what i mean like the money was different, you know what I mean? Like the money had a, a, had a value. It They're still not had even playing with money right now. Seventy percent of its value. Mm-mm. And, and, and it's like you know, for you to be going with singles. And, and and hitting them like that, like I know that mm-hmm. shit must have been killing them. Because man, was we getting a lot of singles back then? Oh my god, yeah. funky, nasty, crunchy ones man. too. Man. <laughs> Okay, so now you done you done diversified from from the from the girl to uh, the in the 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 car business, the insurance business, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. and and ultimately you start you you, you do catch a situation, mm-hmm. right? Um, but it doesn't quite stick. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. Tell me when when does that happen in in respect to the situation to the time period you're talking about now? Um, that happened in '92. Okay. Um, June of '92. My girlfriend's so, like 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 I felt I you know how you feel the heat. It was it was it was almost time to stop anyway, but I felt the heat anyway. And seeing different cars and shit, tennis mm-hmm. on him. Mm-hmm. So. Um, we weren't gonna be getting to work for a while. So my girlfriend's mother asked to borrow some money because she had she needed to make some money. She ain't want me to keep taking care of her. Ooh, ooh. Come to find out, she was being manipulated by somebody. You know what I mean? To to mm. to trap me. That was the ultimate goal. So she borrowed the money. She went and done the deal. It was a reverse buy sting. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have no drugs. Reverse by sting. Come get me out out the bed. You know what I'm saying? Took me to the scene of the crime. You know what I'm saying? We go downtown. I don't have nothing to say my lawyer's present. Um, by the time I said that, my lawyer coming through the door. Because my uncle, somebody didn't call my uncle and told him what happened. So lawyer was there, um, which I charged my client with nothing. So, okay, we he's free to, yeah, he's free to go. He asked about her. They was like, oh, she's straight. And she was like, I'm good, I'm okay. So that day I left, immediately called to connect, immediately called all my friends, let them know what happened. Now I'm still unconscious about a lot of stuff, but I know a lot of stuff too. So the connect was trying to tell me, okay, this is what I need you to do. It's the same connect? Yeah. 
the, the weed shit and all that shit. Mm -hmm. It's him. So he tells me that um that uh he want me to call him back and give him this name and tell him you work for this name. Call who back? Huh? Call who back? The FBI. So I say, nigga, I'm not calling them. Nigga, they let me go. I'm not calling them back. You know what I mean? Like, no, you got to do this. You got to do this. So I'm like, man, I'm not calling them back, bro. Like, they let me go. You know what I'm saying? You can forget that. So <laughs> nothing still resonate with me for real. I'm just thinking he on some advanced move to, I don't know what the fuck he on, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then, then about a week later, he started calling me, talking about, they gonna kill me, they gonna kill me. I'm like, who gonna kill you? The connect? Yeah, the guy I was getting it from. Right. Because now, in the midst of, in the memory of all this now. Right. The real connect is calling. Now, when I meet in my dude office, my dude say, all right, he gonna get on the phone, I just want you to tell him that you gonna take care of it. You know, I'm like, okay, I'll tell him I ain't tripping. I'm going to take care of him. Don't know what the fuck he talking about. Right? So the real connect calling, saying, uh, so you got on the phone? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take care of it. All right. Y'all, he's saying, I'm going to need you to because, you know, like, I don't understand. I'm like, okay, I got you. Clueless, bro, as to what's really going on. You wow. know what I'm saying? So, so um, this happened about two or three times. Now, after all the shit, let me go back to here though first. So, um, so um, now they can't. Now, shortly after that, when he called and say this, he called and say this. Now he wants me to come meet him. So I goes and I kicks it with him. This is the person I'm seeing, not the person that was on the phone. So I'm the person I see, I go meet some. Shortly after that, he comes a body. Right? Say what? I'm the last person that was seen with him. So now they got me suspect for homicide. Right? So, um, it's crazy, man. Like, this shit crazy. So, um, I still don't know nothing. Clueless, like, I'm just baffled. Like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I'm saying? Mind you, this motherfucker owed me about six, seven million. You know what I mean? So, um. The, 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 the done, the done yeah. dude. Because oh, oh, he's been borrowing money. He ain't been, you know what I mean? He been doing all type of borrowing money. Um, I gave him, like, this time too, I had a bunch of property. I had a bunch of real estate. I had about 52 houses that they took from me, but he owed me like 60 houses that I gave him money for already. He used to get them hood packaging plans back then where you can get mm -hmm. like 10 to 20 houses in a package. Some yep. of them you can do something with, some of them you can't. Right. You know what I mean? So, so, um, so that happened. So, um, the last one saying with him, boom, that's there. So now, I'm suspect for a homicide. They put me on TV, known for a lot of millions, here from here to Chicago, Phoenix, California, Columbia, Mexico, other parts of Guatemala, weekly. Um, some crazy shit. You know, Have you been indicted? Yeah. No, I haven't been indicted. Holy I'm just fuck. a suspect. Holy shit. So bro. listen how they come up with the indictment, though. So now, when... That happens, I see myself on the news, I disappear, right? So when I disappear, and I'm on, still only a suspect though, they run about all my people's cribs, you know what I'm saying? All that old shit. So, so um, what they did was, when my girlfriend's mother did that situation, all the information that she gave them, because she was my, she moved for me. So, so all the information she gave him was accurate, mm. but it didn't come from me, right? Mm. 
So they created FBI 302 and said that I said these things and they lodged a warrant on me for drugs, which was end up being a, a regular indictment at that time. Um, now, what they did was my Vasa rights paper, they scratched out, refused to talk and put refused to sign. Made the FBI 302. This is how to get the warrant on me for the indictment that I beat on Speedy Trial Act. So they, that's how they got the warrant on me. Large indictment. You know what I'm saying? I'm out the way, moving around, um, end up getting caught up. They had a federal fruit here warrant on me um, from that particular indictment. So, uh, Stay in jail 13 months. The first 90 days, because they caught me with a gun. The first 90 days, I posted bond on a gun. So now I'm in the federal custody now because I done bonded on the state shit. But they don't know I posted the bond. So after I posted the bond, we filed a motion for a speedy trial. Right? So they don't take me to court to the 181st day. All this time I'm in the county. They doing the bullpen shit. And they, they did this about 10 times, man, where they act like they're taking me to court, wake me up 3 o'clock in the morning, run me through all the bullpens. Nobody never come get me. Go back up, you know. They're trying to break. I guess they're trying to break. I don't know what the fuck they thought they was doing, but uh, they never took me to court. I finally go to court on my 181st day. And that's when a judge is like, this is the, the most the greatest miscarriage of justice I've ever seen in my life. Like, why y'all just wouldn't take him to court? And and what was what was the logic? What why they what so the busy that the person that got the person that got murdered, his wife was a judge, his burger was a congressman. So they were so busy trying to break me and get information that I don't know. Open therapy. You see what I'm saying? Isolation. Yeah, you know what I mean. So scare tactics. Yeah, all that. You, that that's why I asked you as you like ran down the news report. I'm like, oh, oh, so you indicted already? No, no. Oh, oh, somebody somewhere with some power is mad. Yeah. So because that was that was libel all day long. Yeah. Unless somebody has some real inside information, how would they get that? You know, mm -hmm. we well, go ahead. So. Yeah. So now I'm in, I'm in there ten and a half months. So when when they went um, the hundred eighty first day from we filed for a dismissal. So now for me to go to court, they transferred me from the county to my detention center. This is how I meet my godfather, which ought to me end up being. The real connect. Not the real connect connected to your upline. Well, bomb book out of it. What the fuck, son? We fuck this. We doing a movie. Let's go. <laughs> but here. that ain't shit though, right? So now I'm young. I didn't had about six attempts on my life because he's saying that he's gonna look out for me, right? This is the connect, the connect, connect the, the real motherfucker. That's, that's that's in the in the spot when you get there. Yeah, he's already in there. Ain't got nothing to do right. with me though. Right, but he's already in there. So he um he uh, he been promising me that he's gonna look out for me. You know what I'm saying? Just. On something, we're going to work, we're going to work. But honestly, he was just trying to size me up to kill me because I was a young nigga with too much information. So every time I go meet at the rendezvous spot, somebody gunning at me. Uh, I, 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 I did meet the element surprise about six times, bro. No. So hold on, bro. How, how, so it happens. You, you go to. I'm on the run. Uh, you, you go to a rendezvous. I'm on the run. You, you on the run. I'm on the run. But you go to make a move. I go to make a move, tell them I, I need some money, I need some Don't money. nobody know that you're making this move, but you and who you're making a move with. But listen, I'm so, uh, listen, I'm I'm so, but because this dude is so connected, 
I was taught or programmed to think that it probably has something to do with him and his people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I go to make the move, but mind you, I'm, I've been on the run. I've been in the house, bro, every day for months and months and months and months, bro, like in years. You know what I mean? Like, so like my spiritual senses is crazy, man. I used to, like, I was going crazy. Man, I used to sit back and look at a fly, be like, okay, that motherfucker, when he get up, he gonna go this way, that way, and he gonna shoot that way. Don't let that motherfucker be right. Don't let him do that there's, exact shit. There's, there, there's a reason for that. <laughs> when we when we get to talk offline, I, 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 I'll share that with you. That's... That's my that's my area of uh, of interest and expertise, man. Okay, yeah. cool. So, don't let that shit happen. So now I'm in I'm in my most highest spiritual senses ever because it's only me. I'm living by myself every motherfucking day. I only come out at 11, 12 o'clock. Go to the twenty four hour grocery store, H E B, right around the corner from my apartment. Back in the crib all day long, shades down all isolation. day long. I'm living in total darkness. He's a self self imposed house arrest. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so when they pull a move, I'm feeling it, I'm seeing it, and I'm built for it. Right. Boy, you talking about some matrix shit? <laughs> Nigga, oh my god, man, it was crazy, man. One time, man, listen. So. After the, you know, the first time is like real super suspect. I know you going to be there. You know, I'm going to be there. Nobody else is supposed to know or need to know this. Mm -hmm. And and somehow somebody shows up there trying to hit me. Uh, that is definitely going to be a super duper big ass red flag for me. You dig? <laughs> That's not going to get a second opportunity. Right. How do you end up? But, the, oh, let, 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 but he's programming me to make me think because his wife was a judge, his brother was a congressman, that maybe the phones was tapped some kind of way and they had somebody on their end trying to catch up with me. Oh. So he's like, sorry, the people, <laughs> my, my family's a little concerned about you. So, you know, <laughs> they might try to kill you while we trying to handle our business with nothing personal. You know what I'm saying? So again, I didn't figure like I still like he ain't admitted to this day that that but what made me feel a certain way was when I met him in the detention center. He never knew who my real dad was. Right. Him, my real dad done done time in Jackson together. Right. You know what I'm saying? And my dad put in work. You know what I'm saying? Right. For him, whether it was on the streets or whatever. But when he found right. out that was my dad. He just kind of like got emotional. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this nigga? Never said nothing still. But I'm just going to say my own. Intuition. To, my own intuition is that had he known that that was my dad, he would have dealt with his situation different, which he probably wouldn't have been in jail. Because I'm one of them motherfuckers that have sacrificed myself. And then my dad already gave me like two soldiers that was Vietnam vets. Whereas that if they do kill somebody, they get out in six months on a shell shock, whatever shit. You know what I mean? So, I never do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, they be having that post-traumatic stress disorder and all that old shit. Oh, You know what I'm true. saying? That's so, yeah, true. they dead now, though. Shit, but all my uncles is that. Yeah, they see? all that. Yeah, I've seen it. But they, 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 they dead now, bless the their heart. But they would, if they have an episode, they would put their ass in the hospital, medicate them for six months. And they resurface. Yeah, that's ill. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I never you had a fucking... chance to use them anyway, though. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's just that's what they was on. And that's how they right. fuck with my dad. All right. So you got a real complicated type of situation. You got, you know, you got layers of shit. Yeah. So you got you got the people on you. Mm -hmm. You're on the run. Right. And as you're trying to sustain and keep your situation moving you meeting with your people and they're connected to judges and congressmen mm -hmm. and they may or may not have a situation where they're trying to clean up this guy's mess and you're his mess mm -hmm. and so like where do you where do you turn bro i, I turn within that's right 
I turned with him, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just went closer into myself until like about the fourth time. I remember I was on, um, I don't want to say that. I remember coming out of somewhere. And my spirit told me that these guys was laying on me. And this this is probably where, where, when I got my first chopper, bro, like when I was on the run, not in the city, I had all kind of guns in the city, but when I was on the run, I had the first episode coming out and I just felt something. I just instantly activated. Just went in there mm. and took the chopper up off of him and kept it moving. Mm. 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 <laughs> yeah, man. Now you 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 not in yet, but they they trying to get you and they trying to put you in. Mm -hmm. What what do they ultimately indict you for, and how does that go? Um. Well, ultimately they died. They indicted me for the indictment with my girlfriend's mother and her. Okay. I ended up getting that dismissed for speedy trial act. They re-indicted me and put me on a seven mile dog indictment. Seven mile dogs. Yeah. You, not, did you know them dudes? Yeah, yeah. I knew well, Click and Click and JoJo is my cats. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, um the two the two guys that testified against me at trial was the Simpson brothers, were their cats. I didn't know mm. I didn't know them for real. You know what I mean? I didn't ever fuck with them. JoJo was always with Click and Rich. Them three was the three musketeers. Them motherfuckers always really good, you know, always together. So but Click was really my man. Click, if you knew Click, Click wouldn't let nobody else talk to me or fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? So, so um, I knew Click, and uh, that was my that was my guy. So when they initially indicted them, you can really see where the indictment was going from the information in it. You know what I'm saying? So I tell him, bro. You know, like, you know, come to find out. Like, it, they probably wouldn't even been indicted, man. Like, these guys was, the two guys, um, the two guys, Ron and, um, Ron, no, no, one guy, Ron, they was gangbanging his wife, wasn't sending them no money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think they even got impregnated at one point. You know, so, you know, that kind of like alleviated that zest taste I had in my mouth for them guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you you mad because you got two niggas testifying and shit, don't even know you, but, and you had that in your heart like one day, you know what I mean? But when I heard all of that shit, like, I wish I would have wow. known because I stand for righteousness, you know what I mean? Like, I would have right. made them guys do everything right. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, that was that was a that was a bad situation there. That's what even created the indictment. Them, awesome. guys, them guys that got caught was doing their time and was chilling. Calling their right hand man, supposed to have been taking care of them, but they was just doing everything wrong. And when the situation was initiated, the heat was initiated, it was initiated from the guys, your guys that were on the inside. Yeah, it was initiated with a seven mile dog situation. Okay. And when Click got killed, they put where his name was at, they put my name there. Whoa. Yep. And then nobody from the streets testified against me at trial. None of that. Just two them two niggas that's been in jail. One been in jail five years, other been in jail six years. You know what I'm saying? But they had really committed to really just knocking them niggas off because of what they were doing. But because Click ended up getting killed, Rich ended up getting killed. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They just, uh, I, I was guess I was guilty by association or just collateral damage, so to speak. Exactly. They they have they have a story that they have to yeah you know fill in all the roles. Mm -hmm. So if somebody falls out of a particular role, especially a pivotal role, it's like any other production. You have to find a stand-in. Yeah, who's a good stand-in. Who 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 be believable in the part? Right, and you certainly if they if they were getting the information that we know they were getting, mm -hmm. um, then they knew you fit the part, even if they couldn't make it make sense. Right. So so that's how so, I 
Go ahead. Yeah, so that's how that that indictment stuck. You know what I'm saying? Um, they formed it. It took them two years to form it, though, because I got indicted in 99. I didn't go to trial to 2001. And so you, were I you free on the street all the time? Huh? So yeah. you on the street all the time? On the street, still able to move. I was even able to travel out the country at that time. Still an indictment. Under a federal I, indictment? Yeah, because I had a company, you know, record company and all that shit. Record company, B&B. Mm -hmm. when, in, when did you start b, &B? I started b, b I got out in 2010. 2012, 13. So this was after the situation that you were just sharing? Yeah. And so when that case came to its ultimate conclusion, what did you end up getting and what did you end up doing? I ended up getting um, 188 months. My sentence was up to 120 months. But um, they had put together a situation and had me dating this motherfucking police broad set me up with a gun. You know what I mean? And, um, they sent you a pro, an undercover police woman and, yeah. and, and had... And, she, and yeah. They, they you were, saw dating her? Yeah, I didn't know she was a police, though. Right, right. Yeah, like, dating her. They you, sent her they, they sent her at you for that purpose? Yeah, for sure. They sent at me for probably everything. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's dating her. And uh, one day I left her crib with a gun and state troopers out there waiting on me. Caught me with a gun. Yeah, she, so they get hands mm -hmm. me from 120 to 188 months. Wow. And um, they took, uh, then they came out with the crack law that took 40 months off. And then they came, and then they took 13 months off when I did the county time. Right. So I, I mm -hmm. they took 53 months off my 188 month sentence. I came home like nine and three quarter years, almost 10 years. So when you touch down, what's your first move? Honestly, I was just spending time with the family, just trying to pay attention, seeing what's what, seeing who's who, seeing the vibe of the society, you know, the culture, the people. Um, and um, I can say I was displeased because the people that I knew I left in position with millions and millions of dollars was now broke, couldn't pay me none mm. of the money they owed. Mm. Um, not only did you it, did were you aware of that prior to you touching down? Or were you up, I mean, up yeah, because the they, they had not tried to get nothing to me the whole time. Right. You know what I mean? So So you just knew you was coming home with some bread. At least I'd be able to press for some bread. Right. I couldn't even the press wouldn't even it was the niggas was broke. You had nothing. Yeah. So outside of that, not only did they not have anything, the men that I had helped scoped them to be they wasn't no more they were listening to they were more like following the pattern of the new jacks mm -hmm. you know what i mean even when i new thought trend. about i wanted to get off the porch and went to holler at a couple of them and in the midst of me talking to them they bringing these new niggas in here for me to talk to them i'm looking at him like i'm cool bro wow you know what I'm saying? These guys don't got no morals, no scruples, no standards, you know, pants sagging, high as hell. Talking about, uh, yeah, I heard a lot about you, OG. Like, I can't I can't wait to cause you all kinds of problems man, right. and issues. <laughs> you can try to save you for myself before I put man, you down for listen, good. So, so now I'm just chilling, man. I, I ain't on nothing, man. I'm like, man, this shit crazy. These niggas are different. So now I see that most of these guys I have adapted these new ways. They ain't living for no morals, no principles, no scruples. They not even like having a backbone to teach these young niggas the proper shit. You know what I'm saying? Even if they ain't motor, you can at least navigate these guys because these guys, they got motion. You know what I mean? But there's no direction. Yeah, it's just reckless. You know, yeah, so yeah. they're just doing it to be doing it. Yeah, that's, so that's, now, that's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. But so them, now they just, see it, but they don't know what it is. Yeah. So now I'm just chilling with the family. I hadn't been home in a while, just chilling with them. And then a friend of mine runs into Charlie. And that's when I started the label shit. So tell me about Charlie Baltimore and BNB. And what does BNB stand for? Breaking major barriers. Breaking major barriers. But um I chose BNB is because 
it represents just what that is, which what it truly stands for is Brian Maurice Brown. Right. And the acronym is Breaking Major Barriers. And that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? That's what I've been doing. You know what I'm saying? My whole life, I feel, and I feel like the the, the way that my name, uh, that my that my my name have persevered through and triumphed through all the trying times and changes, like it wouldn't be a better initial to use. That's right. So, but then B and B ends up uh, becoming the center of its own uh, controversy and and uh, legalities and all kinds of stuff. More so, so than I ever had in the streets. Right. Tell me the story of B&B. Um, I started out pretty good, you know, with, like I said, with Charlie and and um, Trick. And that would be Charlie Baltimore. Yeah, Charlie Baltimore. Biggie, Biggie's ex-girl. Exactly. And, uh, um, uh, and, and Trick Trick, uh, Notorious Trick Trick, mm -hmm. the choice, Notorious Trick Trick. Yeah, <laughs> no fly zone. <laughs> Who who I who yeah and Mr. No Fly Zone <laughs> <laughs> yeah which I which I started with him when my friend died. Click was the one who was promoting him when Click died. I stepped in Click's place and oh. and helped facilitate his career before I went to prison. Right. So 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 you start off with Charlie and, and Trick. Yeah, so off with Charlie and Trick, um, did a lot of trailblazing. You know what I'm saying? Charlie thought it was a bright idea to start like bringing on artists, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like embedded, like the Murder, Inc. idea in me. And they was just picking out, well, we all were just picking out the talent, whoever we thought we was talent, I'll bring them on. And, and this crazy thing is like, I had probably 10 artists that I was rotating with around the world for roughly four or five years without one contract. All, all honor, honor contracts, right? Yeah. All honor agreements. All honor contracts. Your word. That's so right. this is where the legality stuff came in at because, like, I ended up having this president who was uncomfortable about rotating without a contract because it was really no business getting done. You know what I mean? So How were you financing it? Just from managing and the money I already had. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, um, He's like, you gotta get contracts on people. So some of the first people we got contracts on was Cash Dow, Lil George, Charlie, um, and then everybody, so on. But Cash Dow, that was one of the first contracts. Now, mind you, I'm not a contract type of, I never was. I'm more on, you know what I mean? Like, let's align and let's go get the money from the system. Like, you know what I mean? That's that's my thing. I was just trying to align with people, create a locomotion and let them, you know, and let's, let, let me create a movement for, you know, and, and make some real shit happen. So, so um, it was one of the first contracts that, I did, like I said, I did with, with Cash Dow. So when all that started happening, I've, I've been moving around. I probably didn't spend a million and a half dollars on it within like six, seven months. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I made people buy into who she is. You know what I'm saying? Um, everything so that my girl, cash doll. Yeah, cash doll. Mm. Like everything that girl asked for, she did. Everything she asked of her nigga, I did. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm being honest to her, she don't even know it. But anytime she pressed him for something, he called me. Whether it's a car, jewelry, you know what I mean? Some car, you know, if he get her a car, I might have bought the car, gave it to him to get to her. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a lot of shit that she didn't know, but. That's what it was. So he, this nigga basically was in a relationship for free. Like if she had to pay for wow. it. Yeah, he was in a relationship for free. He had he wow. didn't have to do any work when I when he brought me on. At that point, I done everything. Balling by proxy. Yeah. I done everything for her. You know what I'm saying? And another thing I know she don't know is that when we start getting some heat up under her, he wanted me to stop. What? It was getting too big for him to control. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it was getting too she big. She was caught in the sucker trap. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, you know, I'm a loyal dude, so I'm not, I'm not going to expose him. You know what I mean? You know, and that's one thing I never did. I never exposed him and I never tried to sleep with her. You know what I mean? Because out of respect for him. It, um, that, that's, that's an interesting dynamic in contrast to something that I came across uh, about her having made some kind of statements 
uh, mm-hmm. statements against you at, at, at the point in which a uh, situation um, uh, came about yeah. around B&B. So before you, before you, you know, address that, um, take us along further in the story of B&B. Uh, does B&B put out, put out any work, put out any records, put out any material? Yeah, let me tell you my dumb ass was doing, bro. I'm not a music guy. I'm a people right. guy. The people right. I love is in the music. So right. I was expecting somebody to know what the fuck to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to do my part. I'm going to make sure you get the look, you get everything we have, you, everything you need to be successful. Nobody was doing the business. I didn't put, I didn't got all kind of projects made on everybody, bro. And we just hand passing them out. Not even uploading the shits. Can you believe wow. it? Here we go again. This, this is no different than me not having a fucking scale. You hear me? That's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. See, and I was about to say that, uh, you know, there's a saying that goes, how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. Right? Um, unless, unless you learn more, Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how much more you get. Right. You're going to do what you've always done until you've either lost enough being that way or, or you know, change mm-hmm. finds you. And that's the thing. If I would have really concentrated on wanting to be in the business, I probably would have learned more. But I, my uh, my thing has always been people. Right. You were in the people business. So long as I wake up and everybody, hey, hey, look, you know, fucking with me, you know, I'm cool. You know what I mean? That's so, yeah. So, um, but I built, I had a dynasty just as big or bigger than the cash money and the low memory when they get them all that money. Matter of fact, we was rotating in the same circles, doing the same shit, except they was uploading shit while we was passing out shit. You know what I'm saying? So that shit was crazy, yeah. man. So I, yeah. like I said, I sit up there and watch and we did way more trailblazing than they did. Um, you know, um, but Master P, that nigga, he, that joke is just different. You know, like he, yeah, man. P, yeah, P, P, he's real. different, bro. That joke is different. Baby is too, though. You're like, they, they both of them is very, that, you know, you got to take your hat no off doubt. to him. But I can say like, had I knew what the fuck to do, we would have been right there with him as far as legendary movements. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I I, I, I definitely can believe that. And I, I still believe that's possible oh, yeah. based upon what I've uh, garnered from this conversation. Um, so B and B is making moves. B and B is moving in the same circles as these uh fast up and coming contemporaries like Cash Money and No Limit. Mm-hmm. So B and B is definitely like got a look that's comparable and a footprint that's comparable that they could be in those same spaces and places. Only thing is that B and B is is not producing. Mm-hmm. So. How, if at all, does that dynamic contribute to the issue that you ultimately end up having? Um, because of me not, like I said, knowing anything about contracts uh, and me really forming the contract with her boyfriend. And my Cash attorney off. gave it to him and told him to take it to their attorney. But his thing was only doing stuff to get control over her. And he's a paralegal. Her dude. So when he gave the contract back saying it was all right and told her to sign it, I I still ain't, you know, I only read the, I didn't even read the contract, bro. I still hadn't read his contract in his entirety. I only read excerpts of the contract and it was read to me during the deposition. Well, damn. I'm just... I'm ADD or something, man. I ain't, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Your heart's in the right place. Huh? Your heart has definitely been in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's the thing, though. Like, I don't commit, like, I've never been in the business part. I just, I just I'm just finna hook up with a dude, Steve LaBelle, man, who's finna teach me the business. Oh, yeah, LaBelle, no. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm finna fuck yeah, with Steve, him. No. You know what I'm and he's gonna teach yeah. me the business, man. But yeah, other than yeah, that, I've been in the people, man. I commit to the success. I never committed to the business. You know what I'm I saying? I get it. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I said, you know, that's a that's a common uh misstep for uh gifted intellectual, you know, cats from from certain environments. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of what that type uh applies is um intuitive. Right. And um, our inclination towards 
critical thinking. Critical thinking is what you were saying earlier that your father was imparting to you when he said, basically, don't just think about what it is you want in this moment and make a decision. Make a decision based upon not only what you want in this moment, but what you want ultimately as a direct result of this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, that way you don't end up later on in the situation or situation you didn't want to be in that you didn't intend for. Right. Right. And, um, you know, so that that level of aptitude, it will sometimes bring about a level of arrogance where you, you, you don't really listen like you should sometime, mm -hmm. you know, because you think, you know, you're confident and you feel like, yeah, I need to be confident with my process. And you do. You need to be willing to fall on your own sword, too, you know, when that happens. You know, you know a lot of my problems was I allow people to be kings in their environment or their area. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you tell me that you can properly run this company or properly do your position, then I'm going to trust you to do that. You know what I'm saying? And that's where my problem was. I was trusting people who said that they had helped create companies and start companies to do certain shit and they didn't do it. Yeah. If you had the understanding of what that took, then you wouldn't have had to rely strictly on your trust. There you go. You know what I mean? You could have trusted them enough to give them the opportunity, but you would have had enough understanding yourself to know when they weren't doing it right and stop mm -hmm. them before they can do any severe damage. Like you did in the street is mitigating, you know, risks. Right. You know what I'm saying? Make it adapting, making different changes at different points based upon and your situation, how your situation was changing. I didn't even want to do the fucking company. I just wanted to help the girl. Like from hearing her story, Charlie Baltimore's story, I just empathize with her pain and the past that she's experienced and her passion that she still had for music. So it was never was business. Right. You know what I mean? I was just trying to save a fucking soul. You know what I mean? So so when when the situation came about um with the law, with the with the with the people getting involved, how did that all play out with B and B um, and like, like I just feel it. like it was a dazzle when distress moment where she was, they had convinced her I was the worst person in the world. And, who, they being? Huh, Cash Doll. They, no, with who, who had convinced her about that? Uh, her boyfriend, of course. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause he, you know, by this time, I wasn't letting up off of the momentum of taking her there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now in order for him to get control, he had to paralyze me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So in doing that, drove her to hate me. You know what I mean? Um, and I guess he had the bright idea. The only way we can get out of this contract is if we go to prison. You know what I'm saying? So he used her because it was in her words. It was on her statement. You know what I'm saying? And I'm certain there was all his shit, all his doing. But she allowed him to facilitate that. I had guns, money, and drugs in all my houses. And they ran in all my houses at one time. Yeah, they only found one gun, which is in my second wife's house. House wasn't my name. No clothes over there, none of that shit. Like, um, no drugs, almost six million. But that, of course, that never made the paper. Um, uh, and like I said, it just caused me a major problem. They ended up charging me with Constructive felon in possession of felony firearm. Um, and another thing that they did was... For the pistol that was found in the house that wasn't in your name and you didn't have your clothes in? Yes. Now, the girl on the coaxing of the boyfriend, what, contacts the feds? Man, I don't really know how it was done. I just know, like, and, and, and like... She should know. Like I, I, I'm certain that she's conscious of something because they, they ran in her crib too. They took one of her cardio, a cardio watch that I bought her, iced out. You know what I mean? Um, and he went and got it back two days later. Whoa. Whoa, boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you know, like, uh, you know, um, and just you know, recently I just decided to. You know, like I've been allowing them um, they peace. Like, like my job is to is to blow them up. You know what I'm saying? If it's gonna help her to slander me for five years or get where she need to be, okay, I'm gonna let her do it. 
You know what I'm saying? I've never said nothing, never, man, the whole time, bro. I've never made a statement. I've never shown nobody the papers. You know what I'm saying? I've never done anything. She, like, and even after she did, got, went with Republic, you would think a year after Republic, like, you should be done with me. You should have a year worth of great shit to talk about. But she still slandered me. You know what I'm saying? And and I don't know if she was conscious of, you know, because sometimes you can have a crazed fan that want to come at me just because they love her. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, like I've dealt with, you know what I'm saying? Like my paranoia, all that, but because I'm so, I'm not saying I'm so overconfident and geared for this shit, but you know, like I've had to gear myself for that type of shit. You feel what I'm saying? And right. I've never, um, never went at her. Never like, man, listen, bro. Listen, 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 man. When I was pushing click back in the day with the goon squad, mm -hmm. we had every big nigga in the city working for us. So it's not one security that damn there nobody can hire in the city of Detroit that hasn't worked for me directly or indirectly. Right. So when that motherfuckers move, I get the call. What you want me to do? Make sure she get home. You know what I'm saying? Like I've never wanted nothing bad to happen to her. Outside of that, like I'm conscious that she wasn't really in control of all of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm conscious that she was manipulated majority of the time. I'm conscious mm -hmm. that she didn't even read the fucking contract. You feel what I'm saying? Yep. So, but you know, like where I where I fought her is because I told her, I'm willing to work it out. However you feel is fair, let's just make it fair. That's what this deposition was about. But she wanted to be all the way done with it. And my thing is you can be done with it, but I've already invested. Do the deal with me. That's right. You don't got to X me out, make me think I'm the worst person in the world, make people think I'm the worst person in the world because I'm not. Everything about you came from me. I'm talking about eating shit that you thought that you was quietly getting from your nigga. I did that. Wow. Yeah, that nigga coming to me. She want this, man. I, you know, I ain't got it. I ain't got it. What, what you need, baby? Yeah. Making him look good. That's what I do. So that that situation end up impacting you personally. How? What did you end up having, because like when it first happened with it on my houses, I don't know what the fuck is going on. So now I'm somewhere ducked off for about eight, nine months trying to figure this shit out. So I'm thinking there's some other shit. And come to find out, it's some gun shit. Wow. Now, mind you, I already had some heat on me from... <laughs> I ain't going to say it was him. But I'm going to say I sent a lot of artists on a tour to do a little bullshit and promotional tour. You know what I'm saying? And my tour bus get pulled over. I had a tour bus I paid for. Free and clear. Tour bus get pulled over. You know what I'm saying? What's the first thing their artist is going to say when they're on the tour bus? When the police say, what y'all doing? We on tour. And who they going to say they on tour for? They going to say on tour for BMB Records. Right? Lo and behold, they find 16 bottles of syrup on the fucking bus. Oh, of course. Right? Mm -hmm. Nobody admits to it. So who catch the heat behind that? Of course. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So even though it didn't happen immediately, but that leveraged me because I was still under supervised release. So now they're sizing me up for other shit. I ain't got nothing to do with none of this shit. I get more heat from this artist shit than I did in the streets myself. You know what I'm saying? That's because they was playing gangster. You see what I'm saying? Be a fucking artist. So now, now, now here I am. Now my supervisor, at least people think I got something to do with some goddamn drink. Oh, wow. Wow. So I catch heat from that. I, that shit cost me. You know what I'm saying? Um, behind that little bullshit raid, them looking for the tour bus and all that old shit to kind of like 
formed that little case together. They they only took like seventy five thousand from my 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 brother in law house, but then I had to spend probably about one hundred and fifty just on attorney shit just to separate me from the bullshit. Right. And what happens with the business? Um, the business B &B. never gets done because um, the person who I, I, I'm not going to say that he personally done it or anybody done it. But at the time I was trying to sign Ice Wear Vezo. Mm -hmm. And Bill is the one who actually brought him to me, the one here with me now. He actually brought him to me saying he was in a situation with some of his homeboys he grew up with and he was trying to get out so he can grow. Right. Now, I love this guy. Where the fuck you want me to do what I'm doing? Me you know too. what I'm saying? He also yeah, no, I watch him. I watch him all the time. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, so uh, I paid for him to get out of his contract. I sent, created some motion for him to the point to where they was on the tour bus, do, just moving around, doing shit, just making him, giving him the look that he needs to be successful in music. Right. You know what I'm saying? So after that happened, mm. you know what I'm saying? He probably was being set up from whoever the fuck he was dealing with. Yep. Caught some heat behind it. You know what I mean? And um, ultimately, I'm the one who ended up paying for it that way. You know what I'm saying? He ended up going to jail right behind that shortly after that for the gun anyway. But mm -hmm. just no business got handled between us. You know what I'm saying? He never done what he said he was going to do. You know what I'm saying? He said that, you know, it was some contract shit. But once again, I, if just have your lawyer deal with my lawyer. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what you know, mm -hmm. like, not, not your manager, Chanel. Get a lawyer. Have your lawyer call a lawyer and let them deal with that shit. Right. You know what I mean? Like, but I'm willing to, I'm, I'm the type of, whatever is fair is fair. I'm doing it for That's free right. already. <laughs> so if we can put something together where I can get a little something, let me get it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm doing it for free now already, bro. I didn't right. gave up this money. I ain't got no contract. I didn't did this. I'm paying for you to go here. I didn't took you to New York. I didn't, I didn't did all type of shit. I didn't got CDs. I got thousands of CDs in my garage now with him on there. I didn't got shit pressed right. up. I'm already doing it already for free now. Right. So what's wrong with me getting a little percentage? I don't care. Right. I don't even care about it. You Get know, the shit um, right. This, this, not to, you know, rub salt in your wound or nothing like that, but uh, it, it's definitely a teaching moment. Mm -hmm. And and this is a, an important thing for people in all spaces, moving, trying to make things happen, whatever. You get what you negotiate, not what you deserve. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that's a very important thing to accept. But I want to give you something, bro. Like, I don't, I don't even want to be in the business. I want to be in the life. I want to find the people that's going to be about this life shit, man, that can do business predicated on life. Fuck this business shit. This business shit is always going to be a trick. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I found in this young young girl and her mom, Brooklyn Queen and Kim, they in the life business to where is that we can do business effortlessly for nothing. Like, it's, this shit come with the territory. Like, I don't second question them. They don't second question me. At the end of the day, whatever y'all want, y'all get. Whatever I need, I get. That's how it's supposed to be. It constantly changes the peasantries. Yeah. yeah you, you got to have a certain level of character and individual for that. And Character individuals are few and far apart, man. Right. And uh, listen, you know? I read the way to it's not trending. I read the way to the trending. I read the way to the Soli Eclipse to bring me another one, Dan. God damn it. Yeah, Fuck man. It. It's not it's not <laughs> trending. It's, it, that's not what's, you know, that's that's not the latest challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, um how did, Ray J was in, involved in your joint too, wasn't he? Yeah, Ray, yeah. Ray for J. for a brief second, he came on through the president. Him and the president are super tight. Mm -hmm. And uh uh what was that Brazy? Um, breezy breezy yeah pretty, on, uh, that's coop off all american empire yeah he's an empire yep and coop off all american now that's her latest thing oh that's what's up mm -hmm. that's what's up that's what's up um so you have this situation mm -hmm. um that 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 doesn't sink b and b though does it no because i commit to the success right. you have to sink my soul to snake b and b right can't be something so at what point at what point do you do the billboard? Are you under indictment at the point at which you I'm put under the billboard indictment. up? Um, um, I'm under indictment. I got pressure coming from everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wanted to do something to give me the push 
from an energy perspective, the confidence from an energy perspective, not no, I'm big, no. I, I'm not that, bro. Like, I've never been that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I got the Rolls Royce. I got the Ferraris. I got the Ben. You, you, you can check my whole history. You really don't see me in that shit. Right. I get that from my people. Right. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't never. I ain't him. I'm not chasing. I'm not, I'm not doing it for clout. The situation with B&B is now you, you've, you've gotten this case out oh, of yeah. it, let basically. Me tell you, let me tell you this, man. This is crazy. I got so many things batting for me in this situation. Mm -hmm. For one, I got a motherfucking attorney that's like the go-to for balancing, you know what I'm saying, the situation now with them people. I don't know what kind of favor he got with them or what, what he's done in his past, which is Fishman. You know what I'm saying? Then, mm -hmm. not only that, he's smart as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I got that. I had one thing working for me. They, they, I was supposed to be off papers. December, they didn't let me off. They carried it to do this just to set this case up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like months later. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing. You know what I'm saying? Then another thing. Um, I'm out here on a run, America's Most Wanted at the time, mm -hmm. um, doing some movie shit. Uh, I was doing music shit, but the music shit wasn't breaking for us. So we ended up doing three, uh, a three picture movie deal, worldwide, worldwide motion pictures under my fake name and everything. Mm -hmm. Three picture movie deal. Um, meet this kid. I, and mind you, I'm only telling you what he told me because I can't remember. Meet this kid. Um, and uh, he said, I was just talking to him. I took a liking to him. And, and um, he was saying that he was working there because he was trying to go to college. You know what I'm saying? Saving some money up to go to college. His mother and them, you know, see, they was too, were making too much to where he can get financial aid, but they wasn't mm -hmm. ready to pay for him to go to school. So he was working. He said, asked him about how much his, his uh, tuition was per semester. And he said, I gave him money for four years. I still can't remember this. Only what he's telling. Wow, he's the guy for whom you did this. Yeah, is telling you. It's telling me this. I get it. So, so if it's a day in the life, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Then you know it's a lot of things you just don't remember doing in the, in the process of being yourself. Man, I don't but even for a person that. on the receiving end, it's, a, it's an unforgettable moment. Yeah, like it's a whether it's a good or bad in. encounter. It's a lot of women I ran into. I can't remember it to this day, and they still still mad about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, it, it might have really liked them too. Yeah, at that time. Yeah. Yes, you know. But um, he said that, and um, he was just talking. He said he couldn't believe it because he was asking me who I was. I told him I told him Brian. He was like, "You sure Uncle Brian? I said peanut, and I was like, "Mr. BMB." He was like, "No." Oh. So then he said, Mike. So when he said, Mike, that made me know that he had to know me from a certain amount of time because that's the only time mm -hmm. I use that name. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I said, Mike. So he's like, yeah. So then I was like, okay, Lance and Kevin because those are the guys I was producing. So um, I was able to put the time there, but I still don't remember him. Mm -hmm. So he got on the phone, called his mom, like, mom, remember I told you about, you know what I'm saying? So she was like, yeah, you know, he's sitting here, you know, I, I, he don't even remember me. So I'm sitting there tripping still, like, I don't remember this nigga, bro. Like, this some punk shit or what? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, so um, come to find out, we talk, he tell me that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? And then um, he asked him about what's going on with me. I told him about my case and all that old shit. Probably had to leave again. You know what I'm saying? When I was there, I was under a situation. You know what I'm saying? Um, told him about that. He asked me my name, where my case so from. You, so you told him you were on the run? Yeah. Back okay. then, when I met him, when I met him, I was mm -hmm. on the run. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Unbeknownst right. to him, you know what right. I'm saying? I ain't tell him I was on the run when I was on the run. I wasn't. I didn't meet him right. when I was on the run. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. you, you right. know, right. this right. last time. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, he was like, "Wow!" So he took my name, took my number. I don't hear nothing else from him, honestly. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I don't know him, so I'm not gonna call him. Plus, he ain't give me no number anyway. Right. So, um, so um, fast forward all the way, sentencing time. So um this is sentencing for, for the case that came about as a result of the bus thing cashed and out. the statements being made yeah, cashed out situation. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So 
that's happening. So, um, mind you, just for the people, man, I just want them to know, I really don't think that she was conscious of what this dude put together. Mm -hmm. her I, I swear that. I don't. You know what I'm saying? I, I, she was just a dazzle in distress. I just want out. You know, you know how that bitch can be. I just want out. I just want out. And he just came up with that. Because he he been hurting a lot of us that was all locked up with us. You know what I mean? I ain't the only one. You know what mm. I mean? But um, long story short, um, yeah, so fast forward, sentencing. The judge come in there. She said all this great shit. I'm looking around like, the fuck she talking about? So he's like, yeah, I don't, if Mr. Brown, even if he did possess the gun, I don't think he would have done any danger with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, he doesn't have any history of violence. As far as I can see, he, he pay his taxes. He's coming to do a record company. He's doing, she said all this great stuff, bro. So as she was saying all of this, I'm just sitting there shook, like, what the fuck? So um, she was like, well, his sentence is from 31 to 57 months or some some shit like that. And it's up to me on if I want to go up with departure or down with departure. And because I feel, you know, Mr. Brown has been on the better half of the situation or whatever she said. Like I don't, Then she also said, I don't even think this case is supposed to even be here. My, but since it's here, I got to adjudicate it. And, you know, like I said, I can go upward or downward departure. I choose to go downward. I'm going to give him a year and a day. So now everybody know that's like six months. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Six, seven months. So I'm prepared to do the six, seven months. I ain't tripping. I'm prepared to do whatever. I ain't tripping. And the, what are the what are the charges? That, that, Extractive that, possession that, of felony firearm. Hmm. No drugs. Not even money laundering. What what can um what can a cat typically get? A felon in possession of a firearm. My brother got the same fucking case. He got uh fifty one months. He done about two and a half, three years. Mm -hmm. Same case. Same case. Okay. Except they got the gun out of his car, but still same shit. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's over with. In the end of the day, so I'm I'm tripping. Um, they take you in right then and there? Nah, because it ain't over mm -hmm. 10 years. You know, they only take you in when it's right. over like 10 years. Then they right. got to take you out the streets. So, now, um, mind you, now my lawyer didn't prolong the case probably three years because they kept putting me in the newspaper. And he didn't want me to go to court during the time all that shit was happening. So he just right. kept prolonging it. He kept prolonging it. Um, so when I when we leaving, we're on our way to dinner to celebrate, you know what I'm saying, whatever. You know what I'm saying, I get a call. Hello? Yeah, I heard you got a favor. Yeah, who this? Yeah, I'm Senator such and such and such and such. Yeah, I was letting you know I've been dying and looking at the opportunity to repay you. Get the mother out of here, bro. The cat that you paid for his college education, bro. Bro. <laughs> See, that type of thing does so not happen because you do a, di a type of thing one time. That type of thing happens because you do the same type of thing all the time. And because of that consistency, you plug into something inevitably that's going to be impactful in some way you can't even imagine. Anybody who's walked the walk for that degree or that long knows what I'm talking about. And I don't think I don't think he I think done all got one of those. Yeah. And I don't think he done nothing illegal. Yo, it's crazy, though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he done nothing illegal or persuaded the judge to do nothing illegal because they're not. You know what I'm saying? Not for no little nigger right. anyway. But no, I think he no. just testified to my character. That's what. I, yeah. Sounds like it. As to what I did. You know what I mean? That would make anybody like, wow, are you serious? You know what I mean? So I think that's what probably happened. He probably portrayed my character as to what it really is versus what they were saying. You know what I'm saying? And that's what gave the leniency on me. And then right. you're just like, don't even worry about it, man. You ain't even want to do that. Like, and it's over. Yeah. You, you know, a, another thing that any, if he's a senator, you know, I, I don't know. Most of them are lawyers. Mm -hmm. That's right. So um, as someone, you know, with some degree of jurisprudence, he would know that he had participated in a significant degree of money laundering. Mm-hmm. 
which would not fare well with his constituents. <laughs> right. <laughs> <to the light. laughs> right. And outside of that, my, my, my current lawyer found some other shit too. You know what I'm oh, saying? Lord. Huh? Around the same? Yeah, you know, because like I said, they, they had, they had prolonged my, my, my shit. They're supposed to release me. They never mm. released me because had they released me there, I was leaving the country immediately because I hadn't left the country. I live, I got places in Ghana. I haven't even been, I haven't been to leave the country. Wow. So they wouldn't, they definitely wouldn't have got me if they released me because I would have been out of here. <laughs> For real. No, that's I right. Just, or some Richard Kimball shit. Yeah, I just would have, I just would have been gone. Not <laughs> saying that, you know, I just, I just had to see my families. You know what I mean? Yeah, but. Uh, so, so you, um, you lived in Ghana at some point? Not really lived there, but had secured a family place there. I, well, I'm saying I got a place there. You know what I'm saying? But I never really got an opportunity to enjoy right. the country. Let me say that. Because I really only went over there on some spiritual advisor shit. You know what I'm saying? To find out my fate. You know what I'm saying? But I also had a girl that's been over there forever. You know what I'm saying? That's who actually open my mind up to the many wives you know what i'm saying because i've been taking care of her you know what i'm saying and family members for a minute you know what i mean so i just learned about that multiple wife shit from her it was was charlie one of your wives yeah at some point yeah but at some point she was yeah and you so that your your wife your uh your wife wife she knew mm -hmm. everybody know I mean, when it's played like that, it, that's that's yeah. how it is. I don't have that. I got no. I live uh, one uh, life. That's what I'm saying. A man, a man, man ain't gonna want to do that. Yeah, he ain't want to do that. <laughs> you gonna make a lie out of me? This is what it is. My truth. You right. Know what I'm love, love me along with my truth, or mm -hmm. you know, move on. Yeah. All right. Um. Uh. You were on the run for a while, from like when to when. From 92 to the end of 96. Um, whatever happened to your father? He ended up getting killed. Half his shades got shut off with a gauge in a neighborhood going to do a robbery. And they was waiting on him. It's kind of like a setup. Mm. Mm. Um, what about your mom? She got killed by the 10th uh, precinct um, police station. They beat her to death, probably picking her up, looking for me. Um, 28 days after my father got killed. She got killed. So during the time that you were on the run, your father's murdered and your mother's murdered. 28 days apart. And you were not able to go to either of their funerals, right? Nah, I tried to go to my, my dad's funeral. Um, at the time, I had a cousin, I was an FBI agent. And it wasn't her, but it was her husband was trying to really knock me. You know what I'm saying? I came dressed up in the wig and all that old shit trying to slide in there, but it was helicopters everywhere. It was crazy. You just feel it. But you didn't get caught there though. Nah, because I, I didn't I didn't I didn't push it. Right. Um how would you say that experience impacted you? That's where I had my epiphany at. That's where I lost that total darkness. You know what I'm saying? I had that epiphany, like, and I just embraced everything like it was all my fault. You know what I mean? And uh, from that, you know, it just made me. The death of your parents? Yeah. Yeah, and a friend of mine, and like my brother too. Like, I just felt like it was all my fault. So uh, what that did was things I normally would alienate and assassinate. I just started trying to bring light of it and unite and build versus like trying to do away with it. I try to like salvage it. So mm. um, that brought me into my oneness because, you know, like it forced me to really, really, really like find resolution, just everything almost, you know what I'm saying? Because I wanted, you know, cause I guess just, I just, I just became enlightened about karma, you know, about all that shit, the universe. You know what I mean? And I just felt like I want to just clean my karma. 
And not only had to clean my karma, I had to clean the karma of everybody that I empowered that was fucking over people. So that's when my life is a never ending a battle of living for the sacrifice because not only did I do wrong by me, I, you know, I did wrong by empowering people who did wrong by people. So if I made billions of millionaires and he was abusing people with his power, I got to clean that shit up too for the shit that he's done and justices that he's caused. You feel what I'm saying? So that's how I train my mind to be great and living for the sacrifice. That that sounds like uh, deep introspection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that, that comes from, like I was saying earlier, when you lose enough being the way you are, change will find you. And if you don't, you die. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what? So now you've gone through that. What? What year? What year are we in at that point? Um, we are in ninety three, ninety four. Mm. So after that, you go through um, getting getting caught and dealing with that situation and getting out and starting B&B and doing that until it does what it does and you end up with a, another situation that doesn't go as badly as, as it could, um, when as best as it could. And now, what year are you in at that point? 2000, might have been 17. 2017. So when when was the uh situation where this uh you had went to go pick up some money or uh yeah, pick up some money. Mm -hmm. Pick up some money at a at an olive garden. Mm -hmm. And um the the but the person that you were picking it up from turned out to be a a, a agent. Mm -hmm. Right? The the bag had like Two and thirty-six thousand, mm -hmm. two and thirty-seven thousand damn near in it, mm -hmm. and um, and somebody, somebody, a man they say, mm -hmm. linked you to a drug ring, and uh, made a statement something like, uh, "I believe that there was uh, this two and thirty-seven thousand was you know belonged to um, Brian's and they were the proceeds of a drug trafficking operation." Mm -hmm. Um. This was a this was an investigation that spread to California, mm -hmm. right? This happened in around 2014 or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like the beginning of 2014. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so, a friend of mine mm -hmm. from Cali at the time mm -hmm. asked me to do him a favor. I guess. He had a situation, he wanted to pick some money up from me. He didn't know. But his man had got knocked. You know what I'm saying? They structured for me to pick the money up and they just linked me to it. Because if you notice, like, that's all they have. If I was a part of something, they would. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's what, the, that's what I thought was interesting. Yeah. They would have, like, a trail of exchanging. You feel right. what I'm saying? Like, but right. because I was only doing a favor, they only had me that one time. And I'm honestly to believe that it has something to do with the same prosecutor that's been on my ass forever. Really? Yeah, I, I just believe so. Like, I don't, I think this motherfucker did, like, he felt like I got away with murder and he just hate me. Hmm. So in, in, in that same year, right around May, uh, it says some DEA agents interviewed a drug dealer who was ordered to travel from Los Angeles to Chicago area and stay at a home in Skokie, in Skokie, Illinois, mm -hmm. where there, while there, the dealer sold drugs and collected money from uh, with another man. Mm -hmm. Agents learned the uh, rent for the Skokie home was being paid for via money orders. The money orders arrived in an envelope with the return address of a home near Mosh Avenue in Eight Mile in Warren. Mm -hmm. The home is owned by Akia Brown's your wife, uh, property management company, and it is the address on Brian Brown's driver's license, according to Warren Property Records and the search warrant affidavit. Mm -hmm. They said the DEA agents hit uh, hit a GPS tracking device in an Altima in June of 2014, like the following month after that situation, and traced the car to uh, your wife's um, uh, to your wife uh, with the tracking device on it. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then the the they state the home is a narcotic stash location, otherwise empty except for heroin packaging equipment and two pit bulls in the basement. Uh, the informant told DEA agents, according to the search warrant filing, uh, a few weeks later in August 2014, the ultimate was back at the home in Skokie before returning to California. And mm -hmm. quote, uh, I believe that the ultimate had been loaded with drugs that were transported from California to Detroit for distribution by Brian Brown and members of his drug ring. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, person uh, said uh, pop root. All right. Uh, besides the Ultima, the California drug dealers loaded narcotics in a Volvo C70. Mm -hmm. And in October 2014, DEA and tracked the Volvo from Redford Township to California and arranged a traffic stop. Inside officers found $69,980 in a secret compartment underneath the passenger seat and a pay stub belonging to another alleged member of Brown's drug ring. Mm hmm. Uh, investigations tracked the alleged drug trafficker to a hotel next to Detroit Metropolitan Airport in Romulus. Days later, FBI task force members set up a surveillance nearby and watched the man for seven days. On November 5th, investigators watched the alleged drug trafficker and second man leave the hotel in a silver Cadillac DTS. The Cadillac was registered to Brown's wife, Akia, according to the DEA. Agents shadowed the Cadillac along southbound I-75 before arranging a traffic stop inside the Cadillac. Michigan State Police Troopers found $143,940 hidden in a secret compartment. Mm -hmm. Three weeks later, investigators tracked the alleged drug dealer to Los Angeles area. When agents found the man, he had the same Nissan Ultima linked three months earlier to Brown's wife. Police towed the car and opened the trunk inside. Investigators found six kilograms of heroin. Mm -hmm. DA agents learned a large drug ring needed money picked up from a Detroit based drug dealer and a DEA informant called an alleged drug dealer's cell phone uh, and arranged for the pickup of the cash at a Bob Evans restaurant. Agents listening to the phone call determined the voice belonged to Brian Brown, comparing the voice to videos Brown posted on social media, according to the DEA. And then the quote. Brian Brown agreed to deliver the money to the Bob Evans restaurant, Detroit area, and the DEA agents wrote in the search warrant filing. That's what the date wrote in search warrant filing. The DEA informant traveled to Bob Evans restaurant at pre-arranged time and met with the man who handed over a green bag filled with $100,060. A probation officer concluded that Brown had violated his conditions of his release from federal prison, but Brown remained a free man. Mm -hmm. That was one eventful ten year, my brother. Right. How? Um. Well, the the Cadillac thing. Same nigga asked me to do some guys a favor. I don't know where they at with their appeal, so I don't know if I should say their name. Yeah, just since most people won't know their names, and those that do know. Okay. Well. The 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 eight mile run cats. Mm -hmm. They was having a situation. I always had uh, cars with situations with spots. I've been having them my whole life. Mm -hmm. For guns, money. I bet that helped when you was buying them joints. Yeah, you know that. what I mean. So, uh, beloved, well, cashed out boyfriend. We're friends with them like this. So he was telling me about their situation, telling me, Ooh. so I offered to give them the car to help him. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, that, like whatever drugs and money that was found that uh, they even got one of the brothers there, there at that time, you know, they didn't say that, but, but um, me, I, like that, I, I always had to have my cars to move money because like I said, I ain't never, move irrecklessly, you know what I'm saying? So, and like I said, I always have money, so I'm always moving my money around, you know what I'm saying? Um, and if you notice, like, there's no way that you can have this much investigation and not get no drugs from me, like off of me. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm the type of person, I'm gonna be hands on, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but that particular situation with that particular car, that Cadillac, that's that's I gave that I gave that to them to them boys. You know what I mean? And uh I don't know what happened, how it happened, because I wasn't 
point of contact. I never had their number. They never had mine. I just met them that one time and told them to be careful. And I basically told them they don't need to trust nobody, especially the nigga who brought me to introduce them to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't trust nobody, bro. Like, you know, I, I emphasize to him, like, listen, do not trust nobody. And I'm certain, like, at the end of the day, he's going to be around that too. You know what I'm saying? I just did a Freedom of Information Act just on his name, just to, you know, just to have the receipts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, just to have the receipts. This is a day of receipts. For yeah. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Because he's always trying to create havoc. So I just want to have the receipts. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of people that he's been around that always end up going to jail. You know what I'm saying? A couple of them for guns. You know, um, because, we, you know, like we, where we from? Like, we very seldom going to be caught without it. You know what I mean? So, uh, and he knows that. And he has a history of borrowing things from people and not paying them. Mm. Then all of a sudden they go to jail. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Um, God damn. Yeah. So, and I don't know, you know, like I said, the history of them boys run, whether it was cocaine or heroin. You know what I'm saying? But, like, what that whole movement taught me, like, in which I learned from it, and uh, you can't really catch me around nobody if I ain't got nothing to do with no legal music shit or no motherfucker, my artists or my kids or my family. I can't even be around them motherfuckers. My, my reputation has seized itself so much to whereas that a person can be doing shit 10 years before me, and as soon as they get with me, they've been, all the shit they've done their whole 10 years, they've been doing it for me. That's right. So, you know, um, and they know, because trust me, if they could have linked me to that shit, they would have. Yep. You know what I mean? That that would have been part of all of the newspapers and all that old shit. Like they would have, bro. I'm not, I'm gonna never be their favorite. What you shared is a lot. It's a lot to digest, man. Yeah. Not still not on liquor, drugs, or you know what I'm saying? No, no habits. <laughs> yeah, man. That's 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 impressive, bro. You yeah. you seem like um an emotionally and spiritually and psychologically sound brother, mm -hmm. which is under any circumstance as a black male in this society, a, a remarkable feat. But under your circumstances, from your origins on up, it's, it's, if you're not crazy, uh, you, you really, you know, you really, uh, if you, you beat the statistics by, by an unbelievable margin. Bro. <laughs> Like for real, mm -hmm. for real, for real. Um, so what, what is life like now? What is a day in the life of Brian Peanut Brown like today with all those experiences? Honestly, because of those experiences, man, like I really spent the most of the time by myself with all the wives and women I have, all the kids, you know, cause I, I like, I gotta be able to process damage control like because I'm easily boom boom you know what I'm saying so like when I'm in that mode I need to be in isolation to help to so I can help myself right you know what I mean I can heal myself you know um, and so I don't have no misplaced aggression you know what I mean so that's right I stay by That's myself. Exactly right. Yeah, I stay by myself most of the time, even though I have, a, I have a, a, a beautiful families. You know what I'm saying? Kids are great, man. You know, therapeutic. You know, but it's moments. You know, like like the women, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, like um, and not only do they not understand, it's it's, it's kind of like then came to be like a, um. A conflict of interest, so to speak, with like the support that I need in order for me to help them to help heal me. To more like it's, it's more like a it's like it's more like competition almost. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 because you got a guy that'll do everything, that's done everything. Like, just raise the kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, just raise the kids. Like, like, if you wanted to do those things before me, okay, cool, understand. But don't come up with all these brilliant ideas because you know, all this attention and motion is coming, and you want to make some of it. 
And then you're allowing your peers to pressure you to get what you can out of it because it's not going to last. What? Well, well. You know, or whatever they think it's going to is from their perspective when they don't even have a solid situation there. So you got a unique, rare situation with a unique, rare type of individual that they'll probably never run across in their whole entire life. You know what I'm saying? So you can't take advice from nobody. You know what I mean? So that has pressured them to make me just be live in isolation. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, like I said, one had a misplaced aggression. I love my people. I'm in love with them and I love them unconditionally. So it's not going to be predicated on peace all the time balance all the time, happiness all the time. It's going to be predicated on whatever that one fucking thing you've done to make me commit to you, to make me still love you and be there for you, for my loyalty or the man I am versus that one thing that you do or did. That's right. That's it. The ultimate is about connection. And if you don't manage to do that, you miss the whole point Mm -hmm. genuine connection yeah so when they that's what keeps you tethered here through all the bullshit yeah so when they don't get it like it's best for me to be by myself you know because what they don't know like my demons run deep i'm talking about my demons run so deep bro like i like i just times i just taste the blood like Yeah, I'm just cool. Yeah, it's, it's it's a lot. It's a lot, man. Um, you know, you you obviously subscribe to the polygamous lifestyle, and so you really at at your base, you're really making the same decisions that you've always been inclined to make. You just change the circumstances under which you're making them. So whatever decisions or, or outcomes or, or experiences that you've had in the past from making similar decisions under different circumstances, you can expect more of the same regardless of the circumstances. And let me let me say this too. Let me let me bring you out on this. A lot of them cars and money and shit they found, cars came from me. Cars have been out of my name and everything. Well, because when they done their research. And seeing that at one point the cars was on my name, they gave me the beef. Yep. Like most of it, like only one situation, and that's that one favor that I did, has something to do with me. And it still had to do with no drugs, just money. I've been fucking with money since I've been home. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Um, my... Uh, and I've been fortunate enough to, when they do catch these guys up and they use me as a scapegoat, to not be in a way to where they can convict me. Right. Because that's all that's all end up. These niggas don't want to go to jail for their own shit. That's right. And they will convict me. How much time collectively through all the situations that you've dealt with have you done? Given? Probably 11 years. Eleven years, 11 but if years. you want to add, if you want to add, when I convicted myself, shit, probably twenty. <laughs> <laughs> shit, you know what I mean? Because now I'm so paranoid, I don't get to enjoy life like everybody else probably would. Yep. And I yep, live in isolation. I live in isolation. That's that's the thing that that cats don't get. Like, you never really get away with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's just the way in which you're made to, you know, pay, you feel me? And um, self-imposed um, house arrests, you know, the paranoia, um, the having to analyze and second guess everybody's drives and motivations, sometimes having to, you know, help people to not make the kinds of decisions that could put them in situations that you know they can't stand having to think for others as a real everyday burden those are not the kinds of things that 
are communicated effectively, if at all, through the popular media by which most of the people who are choosing the streets at this point mm -hmm. um, um, are getting their insight into that decision. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, I'm gonna do that shit, not knowing what that shit entails at all. Yeah, and at that's- all. And when you are a person who has that overstanding and you're in that existence dealing with that degree of potential detriment, bro, you like, you are in your own custom cell it is a cell that fits you perfectly. Looks like the, the, the emperor's new clothes to everybody else. Whatever they can imagine being the best feeling you get from being you, that's what they, they imagine you're feeling. That's because they're not carrying all the other shit that you came into the understanding of when they threw you in the trunk of that car and you know took you through what they took you through. Remove those rose colored glasses. <laughs> you know, that's the point of doing this. I know, right? Um, to destroy the rose colored glasses for those who might think that it looked like something. I appreciate and honor the grace and salvation that I've been given for my life. And I gave, man, because of that grace and salvation that I've been given, because Lord knows, like, I've been in so many situations where I should have been dead. Mm. Lord knows I've been in a few situations where I should have got life in prison or the death penalty, mm. you know, um, but by me overcoming that, you know, I'm humble. I appreciate just that very thing and me living for the sacrifice is how I honor that appreciation. You know, me constantly rewarding any soul or situation that's put before me to bring life to it. You know what I'm saying? To bring structure to it, to bring support to it, you know, to bring whatever I can bring to remove, even if it's just a little funk, just to remove a little, you know what I'm saying? Um, is what um, I live for, um, um, to repopulate, you know, um, and put my family back in the life game um, because had I got life, my family would be extinct. There's no more brown men in our family besides my kids now. That's right. Um, you know, to create, you know what I'm saying, a legacy and to bring forth a change with my trailblazing that I know that is really about the life and love of the people. Um, that's, you know, basically it, man. Um, and what I do, it makes me feel great, you know, knowing that I'm able to bring some form of justice to all of the injustice that may have been caused unconsciously, because I don't, I would never consciously cause injustice to a soul. So any injustice that I've caused unconsciously, it brings balance to that, along with the things that are people that I've empowered who've been creating injustice as well. So I don't want to leave here knowing that I left something unbalanced in somebody's life or a systems pattern or, you know what I'm saying? So I just constantly live to clean my shit up, to clean the shit up with the people who I put in power, to, to create, to create life, to, you know, and it's and it's almost to the point to where like I want to help a lot of people, but I can't because with what you just explained. So I just got to keep doing deeds and keep moving on. I want to grab people, you know, like new artists and new people, but it's hard because now y'all go make me a trapper by default. So in order to keep me safe, I got to micromanage your shit. You know what I mean? Micromanage you. You know what I mean? And that's going to put me in the game. That's if a I'm, fact. If I'm going to be in the game, nigga, we might as well do it. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's, that's, a, that's a harsh reality that very few men come to the conclusion of before it, it, it concludes its, its own, on its own, you know? Mm -hmm. um, they just keep pushing until that thing ensnares them one good last time mm -hmm. you know we both have um associates who who've gone that route and we're smarter men than that 
but did it anyway. You know, um, what you're talking about is bearing the burden of the choices that you made long ago before you considered whom you might ultimately become. You know, it's like somebody sitting in prison with uh, life and they're 47, but they made that choice when they were 17 that got them that situation. And it's like, they don't know that that 17 year old, they mm. don't know that person at all. You know, they don't know them at all. The only record they have of that person existing is uh, the record of the thing that they did that got them where they are. Other than that, they got no connection to that person. They don't, they don't understand nothing that person was doing, you know? But here they are dealing with the consequences of that person's choices all those years later. And just because you don't go to prison doesn't mean that that doesn't work that way. And um, it's, been, it's been a real pleasure, bro. It's been a real pleasure. I look forward to uh, some more conversations, you know what I mean, building like this, because uh, this, the sincerity in your sharing is so powerful and so palpable that there's no way no degree of ADHD or pill popping or any of that, you know, can um, circumvent, you know, that frequency, bro. Like right? if they if they watch and they listen, it's gonna do something. Real talk, because you because you kept it a thou out, you know. And I threw a couple of curveballs in there to see how you were you know, how you <laughs> handle. And I know you know that. And, yeah. And you know what I mean? Because I wanted to see. Am I dealing with a, you know, a really skilled narcissist or am I dealing with somebody who is truly sincere? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Those are uh, my old training habits. Okay. You know, but uh, a lot comes forth in creating those types of mm -hmm. learning opportunities. The people who are watching this for whom that type of thing resonates, they're able to take, take that away uh, in addition to the information you share and the stories and all that shit, you know? Mm -hmm. And I believe in that. I believe in that. So, and I know you believe in that too. That's why okay. I'm sharing it with you. You know, so I, I, I really, man, I couldn't, I can't say enough about how um, truly impressed I am with, uh, with the, with your character and the, the man that you present to be, bro. And Seriously. that speaks volumes coming from you, who've been in tune and in touch in direct communication with the people of the world as measured at a high level. Yeah. So I want to say I'm humble, my brother. Yeah, that's real. That's obvious. <laughs> that's obvious. Real talk. Real talk. So, you know, what? what is next for B&B, &B, for, for Peanut? What's next? Well, I think what's next, uh, me aligning with my brother, um, Shug. Shug Knight, we got a lot of things on the floor. Um, he about to shock the world in no time soon. Um, me aligning with Steve LaBelle with LMG Music Group. Um, I think, you know, like that's going to alleviate, you know, like, uh, the insecurities or the insurance or the, I guess I can say the lack of right. that, that, cause he is familiar with the music business. Yeah. He's more than familiar. Yeah. So, you know, I'm thinking if he can really be that and can be straight up. You know what I'm saying? And be fair, because I'm not really going to try to do too much checking behind the fairness. But what he got in me, as far as how my energy is aligned with the universe, his legacy, my legacy can be priceless. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I definitely see that. I definitely see that. But, you know, you live and you learn. Yeah. Right? And... um. A lesson that came to mind, uh, many did while we were talking, but um, one of the lessons that came to mind from my mother was uh, that you you can't you can't really pay people or compensate them uh, or compliment them according to um, what they what they say or you know how they represent or how they feel to you. You really have to separate all of that from the actual actions that they take and the impact of those actions on you. Fuck their intent. How the how 
how are you really being impacted? Which means you have to you have to be taking um, assessments on, on, a, on a constant basis, which is just really self care. How am I being impacted by this impact, by this uh, this encounter, you know, um, this involvement? And um, you know, if it's not feeling good more often than than um, then it feels good, then you know you you have to make a practical decision. Yeah, fuck how you feel. You know, if you align yourself with that going forward, you're an intuitive person. You can trust that intuition. It uh, it comes from a very solid place that operates at a level that would boggle your mind. But um, it won't lead you wrong as long as you listen to it. Yeah. I, and I mainly follow, too, like, this little young girl, she had to been here, like, two times before me. But Brooklyn Queen, that little motherfucker different. She's very, very gifted. I swear, bro. Now, you're going to yeah. meet her. This little motherfucker's different, bro. Where? I swear. Like, nothing you've ever seen. Like, and I'm saying that from a spiritual space. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not talent-wise. It's just a whole other story. But spiritually... You know, like what she sees, what she feels, what she conveys from her seeing and feeling. She's definitely advanced. So you are going to move forward in that in that music, that music or entertainment space. You're just going in with with, you know, locked in arms with somebody who actually knows their way around up and down and through it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's what I plan to do. And the only people I'm doing it with is the people who have remain loyal through all the triumphs, trials and tribulations and adversity that I've been through. Like that ain't had nothing to do with them. And they That's still right. been right there. So loyalty should be rewarded. Yeah. Any 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 uh behavior that we find valuable, we should always encourage it. That's why you tip. Yeah. <laughs> when tipping is deserved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this this is this has been super dope, brother. Super, mm -hmm. super dope. Like uh, I, I, I know, I, like I told you, I talked to a few of our friends in common, and you know, um, they already, you know, when I told them, I was, when I first mentioned they were, um, yeah, I'm about to holler at this cat, uh, Brian Peanut, um, Brown. It was like, oh, 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 oh shit, oh, oh, oh shit, like that. I was like, oh, where? It's like, oh, y'all going? That's gonna be some shit, y'all talking. Uh -huh. So you know, it's, it's it should be uh, I think this should be responded to well. I believe, I believe it will. And um, yeah, man, um, it, we definitely have to uh, come on again. I'm sure that, that that there'll be demand for that. Okay, you know, and um, I definitely want to uh, chop it up with you once we get off of this. You know what I mean? Okay, and uh, build on some other other situations and so forth. Uh, you, you you definitely need to get into the nonprofit space. Okay, yeah, for sure, for sure. To establish yourself a nonprofit organization if you don't already have one, and um, you know, start putting your beneficent nature to um, to work in a uh, deliberate and structured manner that can you know benefit you, benefit your legacy, establish you know um, something that it would be outside of the uh, the attack of your 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 opposition, you know, because the federal government obviously does not like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? The cartel don't like you because you ain't because you ain't working for them. You feel me? And uh, so you know, the those types of organizations they help in insulating you. That's why everybody has you. That's why everybody got them because that's what they do. I think me, Mary, and Steve. You know, that's about the only thing I can see right now and then. Uh, me and me and Suge, like we finna line up some, you know, for um his series. But oh, where? so tell me, tell me about that. Tell me what, what you're yeah. what you doing with Suge. Um, he's finally fin, you know, finna um just talk about his life. He got thousand hours, about over a thousand hours of tape. You know, um, uh, I've been you know helping develop a structure. You know what I'm saying for the for, for the release of it, and I think it's just a timing thing for him. Um, he could have always been done it. Uh, I think that the universe is shifting in his favor, mm. even for his freedom, you know, yeah. and, and he, I just think he's ready to make an impact for what's to come. 
That's you know? what's up. That's and what's we've up. made a hell of a connection. You know what I'm saying? Over the last couple. How'd y'all come together? Um, through mutual friends. Uh, um, through mutual friends. Um, and it's crazy because when I was on the run, he had just started. <laughs> I'm out here. He had just really started Death Row a year before I come out here because when I was on the run, this is one of the first places I came. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I ended up meeting Dr. Pre Dr. Dre was dropping off DJ Pooh to my movie set on Larrabee Street. I running out Prince's studio. And uh, so you got a movie set. You're on the run. You got a movie set in LA. Yeah, I, I have a three picture movie deal with all our motion pictures. And we had um, this is a movie called Blunts and Stunts that DJ Pooh was in. Blunts and, and DJ Stunts. Pooh was one of Dre's producers. Uh, that sounds familiar to me. Mm -hmm. That's incredible, bro. Yeah, so we always been around each other damn near for decades, bro. Like, but just this year, like we really been locked in, locked in. And, you know, mainly probably because of I identify exactly with who he is. Mm. Unlike a lot of others, you know what I'm saying? And then when you understand the culture of LA, you know what I'm saying? And gang and all that, like, you know, and you know, you understand business like that, man, like he sacrificed himself you know what I'm saying? To make it easy for everybody. You know what I mean? It's kind of like trick, trick. Like these brothers, they sacrifice themselves to make it easy for everybody. And it sounds, um, sounds like you sounds like your kinfolk. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for like sure. You. And he's a fucking genius, man. Talking to him is like history class every day, all day, because he's the start of it. Right on this side. You right. know what I'm saying? He's actually the start of it because they was the first one doing them real big movies with hip hop. Right. You know, with a lot of his talent. But uh for the most part. Like, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just say, like I said, it's just like history class, man. I'm just learning so much, you know, and I'm learning business by default, by on some brotherhood shit. But again, it comes from me being on some life shit because he, he's not on business with me. I'm not on business with him. But, you know, because of the brotherhood shit and business surfaces, who's ever who's better to do it with than a motherfucker who identify with exactly who you are from a intellectual, spiritual, structural perspective. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Rare and, and, and very, very uh, far between. Too, yeah. You know, yeah. Um. Uh, uh, there's a, a very, very close friend of ours, uh, Sugar Mine, uh, Vaughn. Mm -hmm. And so Vaughn was engaging a lot when they had this, when he first got the situation that he's dealing with now. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Vaughn had spoken to him about me doing his book. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that, 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 so that conversation had been had. I hadn't had a, a chance to follow up with him with it because I think we were supposed to talk something happened with a lady or something. I can't remember what it was. Something, something happened. And, uh, or it might've been, he might've had a health, a health scare. They get yeah. a health scare or something like that. And then, you know, he kind of wasn't really communicating with anybody for a minute, mm -hmm. whatever. But yeah, I, I, I've definitely been attuned. We met uh, when he came down to Miami and came to visit, uh, came to visit Meech at the house down there. Okay. Way. So the movie, the uh, um, All Eyes on Me movie, um, that didn't really touch, that didn't really touch his story like that. Mm, they ain't really had nothing to do with him, honestly, for real. Yeah, but like, uh, like I said, he's he's uh, he's ready now, and I think I I think I would like to think that I help influence that. You know what I'm saying? Um, not saying His that I, I directed him or anyway, because the nigga's a genius. He's a fucking genius. It's just that when you talk to somebody and they can talk back, that inspires and motivates you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So he probably had 10, 15 years of talking to people, but they can't talk back. Yeah. On an intellectual level. You know what I mean? Right. right. They can't feed him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So it's it's like he get off the phone and he's back to square one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he come up with a thought. I put somebody on the I put somebody on the phone, secure that thought, right, and to enhance it and then motivate it and bring it to life, that's right real. before his very eyes. You know what I'm saying? That's real. So, yeah, that's that's real value right there, bro. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I would like to think that I, 
you know, compliment him as a brother. And that's all I want to be. I, you know, like I'm appreciative of, like I said, the knowledge that I'm getting is priceless. You know what I'm saying? And it don't got nothing to do with adding to my business. It's just the fact of filling in the information from just what you've been seeing and hearing all over the years. Right. You know, so, and, and it just helps with me being able to dissect that information to help figure out some shit on my path. Yeah, real pleasure, bro. Real pleasure. Down for me too. All right. Good show.